Hello, word nerds. Welcome to this episode of The Dictionary. I've got a TikTok thing going on, and it makes my eyes and glasses and forehead and eyebrows look very strange. Almost, almost like Jack Nicholson, but more so. The first word in this episode is deer, D-E-E-R. It's a noun. Yes. From before the 12th century, one is archaic. The synonym is animal. They used to call animals deers? Ooh, this is interesting. But especially a small mammal. That is going to be the end of the TikTok video. Let's stop it and do this and this and put in the hashtags. All right. So they used to call deer animals. Are they used to call animals deer? Oh, we can't wait to get to the etymology. Number two for deer. This one is much more long and specific. Any of numerous slender-legged ruminant animals having usually brownish fur and antlers borne by the males of nearly all. They're, they're talking about the antlers here. The antlers borne by the males of nearly all and by the females of a few forms. Could they word that better, please? So all of the male deers of all the different kinds of deers have antlers, and some types of female deers, doe a deer, uh, they, some of them have antlers. They are of the family Cervidae, which is the deer family. So there's lots of deers, and they have their own family called Cervidae. That's what it says there. They have slender legs. They are ruminants. And we will post a picture of some deers on social media when I get around to it. I'm like 10 words behind. So this is a bad problem. Okay, so what does the etymology say? It is from, or it is, it is a Middle English word, which means deer or animal, which is from the Old English word deor, D-E-O-R, which means beast. So just, just any beast they used to call deer or deer. Um, that is akin to the old high German word tior, T-I-O-R, which means wild animal. Also from the Lithuanian, this is the most interesting, dvasia, and that means breath or spirit. So basically what I think what they were thinking is anything that was alive that had breath, that had spirit. Uh, the Lithuanians called Davasia, and then, you know, there's also the Old High German wild animal, which became beast, which became just animal or deer, and now we called just the deers the deers. Uh, it's so fascinating. I, this just it astounds me. Okay, um, deer-like, that is an adjective. There's no better way to say something is like a deer other than just deer-like. Oh boy, we gotta we gotta do an, a, a sound effect. Um, I was I was sort of going through the alphabet, and now I sort of lost my place. I th- was I on like the the T, the do 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 do. I don't know. We'll go. Oh, maybe I did the U. So we'll do vroom. Yeah, we'll do that. The next word is deerberry. One word noun from 1814. Stay away from the deerberries that they drop. From their butts. Number one, either of two shrubs of the heath family that are found in dry woods and scrub of the eastern U.S. Dry woods and scrub. I don't know what a scrub is. It's similar to the woods, maybe. In the eastern U.S. Number two, the edible fruit of a deer berry is a deer berry. The deer berry makes deer berry. The do, 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 the scientific names, the species names, we have Vaccinium staminium, staminium, and then also Vaccinium caseum. I have to suspect that they're called deer berries because the deer eat the berries. They don't look like berries. That would be weird, a berry shaped like a deer. Um, so yeah, but maybe maybe we'll find a picture and post this as well.
on the social media at Dictionary Pod. Go find it. Go say hi. And if you don't know the TikTok thing, uh, that's on my personal TikTok, which is literally just Dictionary Podcast related stuff. And that's at Speejampar. S P E J A M P A R. Go, go say hi. Vroom. The next word is Dear Fly. All one word. It's probably a fly that hangs around a deer. How many kinds of flies are there that start with an animal name? There's horse flies and deer flies and maybe, I don't know, other things. This is a noun from 1853. Any of numerous small horse flies hmm, that include important vectors of tularemia. Tularemia. They are important vectors. So what is tularemia? It's spelled T U. L-A-R-E-M-I-A, probably some sort of disease-like thing that they spread around, and they're small horse flies. Well, deers are smaller than horses usually, so I guess that makes sense, but maybe they're specifically hanging around deers. They are of the genus Chrysops, C-H-R-Y-S-O-P-S, Chrysops. Do we need to post a picture of a deer fly? As every single one of these, uh, half of these words or so start with deer. They're, they're physical objects, things to look at. So maybe we need to post b- b- a whole bunch of pictures. I do about one a day. I think I need to go back to two a day. Next word, vroom. It is deer hound. One word, hound, like a dog. You ain't nothing but a hound, no. Deer hound, I should say that. You ain't nothing but a deer hound. No, that's that's terrible. Noun from 1816. The synonym is Scottish deer hound. So maybe we'll get more information when we get to the S's for Scottish. And I think we need to post a picture of one right now. A deer hound. Do what why why are they called deer hounds? Would they chase deer to hunt? Or do they look like deer? Do they hang out with deers? Are they friends with the deers? Do they have tea with the deers? Do they go on dates with the deers? Hmm. Next word. Vroom. It's deer mouse. Two words. Noun from 1833. What is this? Is it a mouse that hangs out with deers? Is it a mouse that looks like a deer? Is it a deer that's as big as a mouse? Any of various mice of Northern and Central America, or just North and Central America, but especially one widely distributed in forests and grasslands of North America. The genus name is Pyramiscus, Pyramiscus, but especially the one uh, that's found distributed in forests and grasslands of North America, that one is called Pyramiscus maniculatus. Maniculatus. So why are they called deer mouse, deer mouse, deer mice? Well, they say here it is from their agility. So they are very agile mice when they have to be. If they're living in the wild, I guess most mice live in the wild, but they're very agile. And so they're deer mice because deer are very agile and quick. I guess they jump high and run fast. There are other mice I've seen pictures of that have those long, long skinny legs. I don't know if these are the deer mice. Are they are they rabbit mice? I'm not sure. Next word, vroom, deer skin, one word, noun from the 14th century. This is leather made from the skin of a deer, and then also just a garment made of this leather. Not a fan of this one. Just gonna say that, but hey, it's in here. We gotta read it. Deer skin, deer skin leather. You you can get stuff made from deerskin leather, but, you know, it's probably similar to lots of other leather, although a leather expert would tell you otherwise. Next. Vroom. Deer stalker. uh, One word, like stalking around. Noun from 1870. Hmm. A close-fitting hat with a visor at the front and the back and with ear flaps that may be worn up or down. This is called also deer stalker cap 
or deer stalker hat. I, I am not an expert on hats. I know a fair amount of hats, but I don't know a lot of hats. I Not as many as maybe even the average person, and I have not heard of a deer stalker hat, although I can visualize it, and I think we need to post a picture of a deer stalker hat. This must be the hat that people wear when they're stalking deers, hunting deers more specifically. And, you know, maybe it's cold, so they need the flaps to warm their ears. And the visors? Why do you need one at the back? Is it because you can put the hat on either way and it will work still? But yeah, the visor in the front, maybe it's going to help with some sun. Uh, yeah, that's all I got for that. Vroom. Deer tick is next. Two words, noun from 1982. An exotic tick of the eastern U.S. and Canada that transmits the bacterium causing Lyme disease. And it is called also black-legged tick. I assume their legs are black. Exotic, this is an exotic tick, The word exotid is spelled I-X-O-D-I-D. And the species names couple for this tick are Ixodes scapularis, or Ixodes. I don't know how to pronounce that first word. I-X-O-D-E-S. All of you tick experts can tell me the correct way. Ixodes scapularis. And then there's another one, Ixodes Damini, D-A-M-M-I-N-I. There's a picture of a deer tick, and yes, I will post a picture of one, uh, a real one, not a drawing. And so just be warned, you're, you're warned if you go check that out. Um, but yes, so their body is kind of teardrop-shaped, what we think of as teardrop-shaped. Uh, it looks kind of shiny and just a big brown thing, and then it has eight legs that come off um, the, the back ones, uh, are at about halfway down the, the round body, and then the front ones are pretty close to the front, and each of the legs has, like, one, two, three, four, four or five segments, and they're kind of pointy at the end, it looks like they got little claws, and then the face of the tick has, like, three, three, maybe antenna kind of things poking out, two of them are maybe antenna, and one of them maybe is, like, a mouthpiece, but it doesn't uh, really show much detail. And that is the deer tick, ladies and gentlemen, and everybody in between. I think we need new phrases, don't we? Hmm, I think we do. Next, vroom, deer yard, one word, deer yard. Noun from 1849, deer yard. I had a great time playing on you today. We played some tennis and badminton, and then we mowed you the yard. We mowed you, and it was such a wonderful time. Deer yard. Dear me. Okay. The deer yard is a place where deer herd in winter. Just wherever they go, it is the deer yard. Next is de-escalate. No more deer words. I am so sorry, unless there's something in the book that does not start with deer. It comes later in the word. Here we have de-escalate, and the D is followed by a hyphen. This is a verb from 1964. The synonym is the 2B definition for the word limit. Just gonna limit things and de-escalate. That was transitive. Here is intransitive. Oh, by the way, I'm seeing this little division symbol for the uh, an abnormal pronunciation. So de-escalate is the main one. And then de-es... I guess it's keolate. De-escalate. Some people like to say that. Okay. Intransitive verb to decrease in extent, volume, or scope. Just uh, whatever those things are, just decrease them. We're going to de-escalate... I mean, I, I automatically think of just de-escalate a situation. So what would that be? Extent, volume, or scope? Maybe extent. What's the extent of a volatile, dramatic situation? We've got to de-escalate. 
Okay, everybody, just chill. Let's let's center up, get back, and figure. Let's let's talk this through. De-escalation is a noun, and de-escalatory is an adjective. Vroom. Next is deet. D e e t. It is a noun from 1962. A colorless oily liquid, insect and tick repellent. It's going to repel the insects and the ticks. It's colorless, and it is an oily liquid. The, uh, the chemical numbers C12, H17, N, O. Where does this word come from? DEET. Well, let's see. It's uh, some scientific-y stuff that's a little hard to read. Uh, it says it's probably from D, E, T, so just just one e, not the two e's. D e t, which is diethyl toluamide, and there's a chemical. Now why would this? Oh, to, toluamide, I guess, has its own uh, chemical letters and numbers, which is C eight H nine N O. But then when you add the di and the ethyl, it becomes C twelve H seventeen N O. I guess. But there's only one E, so it's D-E-T, but for some reason we pronounce it DEET, and we spell it DEET. Maybe they didn't like DET. Hovroom. Next is the first of the D-E-F words, DEF. First form, adjective from 1979. This one is slang for the number seven definition of the word cool, which, you know, it's like cool, Joe, Joe Cool, is that what he was called? Joe Cool, wearing the sunglasses, Snoopy the dog, very cool. He is deaf. Um, uh, let's see, this is probably an alternative of the word death, D-E-A-T-H, which is from the phrase to death excessively. Now wait, I'm confused. So the phrase is to death. And then I guess it's from using the phrase excessively, maybe excessively. Maybe they said it so fast that it sounded like deaf. But how is deaf like cool? This doesn't make any sense to me. I don't know. This one's a stretch. Maybe we need to go to etymonline.com and uh, check out, or is it .org? I think it's .com. And uh, we need to check out the etymology for the word deaf. I, I need more info than this. Uh, they Might Be Giants have a song I think, is it called just I'm Deaf, maybe? It's a very silly song, and I'll put in a, a clip of it. Uh, it's not on one of their main albums. I think it's on the, the B-sides, but uh, yeah, it's just a very, well, it's just, just listen to it. Now we do that. Now we do that. Now we do that. I'm Deaf. I'm Deaf. Yeah, it's just a fun little silly song. The next word. Vroom. The second form of the word deaf. This one is an abbreviation for one, defendant or defense. Two, deferred. Three, defined or definition. And four, definite. Definitely, that is true. Vroom. Next is deface. Or just deface. You're the, what's that? That oh, I, oh, that's bad, bad. Deface, deface. What's with your deface? No, nope, that doesn't work either. Deface. Okay, we're gonna move on. Two. This is a verb, a transitive verb from the 14th century. One. To mar the appearance of, or injure by, effacing significant details. Okay, to mar the appearance of, so you're just making, you're changing the appearance, you're messing it up. Whatever the appearance is of something, you're messing it up, you're defacing it. You're taking the face of it, and you are making it marred. But there's also injure by effacing significant details. So this feels like this is more of, not something physical, a physical appearance, but this is more of a, uh, who I don't know, esoteric kind of an idea, maybe like a, a legal thing, a, a book, a poem, I don't know, something that's not so physical. Um, changing the details, 
You are facing the details. You have injured it. It's all. It's a very negative thing to face. There's um. Oh, here we go. Yeah. Here's an example. Deface an inscription. So you could be physically defacing this inscription if it's literally inscribed on a thing, or you're just talking about it and you're marring, you're injuring it, its meaning. Number two, the synonym is impair. Three is obsolete, and the synonym is destroy. I don't think that's all that obsolete. I mean, that feels pretty, pretty, pretty similar to me. Destroy, deface. Maybe destroy has more of a, you've really fucked the thing up, and deface is just, eh, it's just, it's just messed up. Defacement is a noun, and defacer is a noun. This is just from Anglo-French, de plus face, face, uh, which means the front or the face. And then, of course, put a de in front of it, and it just changes everything. Next is de facto, which is our last word. Uh, This one's the first form, and there will be a second form. De facto is two words, de, and then facto. You can say de facto, de, is that a de facto or de facto? But in each case, I think you're emphasizing the fact, the facts of life. Adverb from 1601, in reality, that is what it means, in reality. Are we in reality? What is reality? And then the synonym is actually. This is, oh, let's talk about the, uh, the, the, yeah, the etymology. It is from Middle Latin. It is Middle Latin. And it liter- literally means, literally means, actually it means in reality, it literally means from the fact. How do you use this in a sentence? I have definitely heard this used often, but uh, I don't know if I actually knew what it meant. Maybe I did in the context. I don't really remember. But yeah, I, I would love, love to hear an example. How do you use it? From the fact, I'm going to try and use this one. One more word for this episode. Froom. Second form of de facto, adjective from circa 1689. Number one, the synonym is actual, but especially being such in effect, though not formally recognized, as in a de facto state of war. So what? It is actual, but it's not formally recognized. Hmm. Being such an effect, though not formally recognized. So it's not actual, I don't know. Words are weird. Number two, exercising power as if legally constituted, as in a de facto government. I feel like I've maybe heard that. Exercising power as if legally constituted. So you're not legally constituted to exercise these powers. De facto, it's, uh, okay, it's like, what, when, when a president is kicked out or killed or something, then they have a replacement. Temporarily, they'd be the de facto president, maybe. Is that right? Hmm. It's interesting because it comes from the Latin, from the fact. So these are things that seem like they're, they're just, I don't know, they're not actual, they're not in reality. They're just sort of there. I don't know. It's, it's odd to me. Maybe there's more explanation. Number three, resulting from economic or social factors rather than from laws or actions of the state, as in de facto segregation. I feel like I wouldn't know which one of these the thing is talking about if I hear any of these examples. Is it the thing that's such an effect, though not formally recognized? I mean, you probably can get it out of context, but... uh, Exercise in power as if legally constituted a de facto government. Although if I heard de facto government, I could put the first definition to it. It's not formally recognized, formally recognized. And then the other one is more complicated. Resulting from economic or social factors rather than from laws or actions of the state. If you can't tell, my brain does not fully understand these things as well as other people's brains. 
what were the words of this episode? I'm going to reread them. And then we're going to pick one as the word of the episode that we had today. Deer, deerberry, deer fly, deer hound, deer mouse, deer skin, deer stalker, deer tick, deer yard, de escalate, deet, def, def, deface, de facto, de facto. Hmm. Which one is jumping out? I mean, I love all of these actual animal things. Deer, hound, deer, mouse. That's not an animal. Uh, but I don't think I'm going to pick any of those. I think I think maybe we just need to pick deaf, the cool one, as the word of the episode. I don't feel like I'm somebody who can say that I'm deaf, but you can say it. You can say it. Uh, do I sing the They Might Be Giants song? I'm deaf. Nope, that doesn't sound good. Deaf. I always wanted to be deaf, but I am not. Okay, that's a that's gonna be the end of this this episode. Uh, let's see. I watched some movies. I watched some movies recently. I don't know if you care to know this. You can shut this off right now. I watched nine movies on the plane, going to and coming home from our trip recently, and I. I won't go through them all. What I see, E.T., hadn't seen that since I was a kid. Oh, it's good. It's got its problems. Uh, Jurassic Park Dominion, real great to see on a 8-inch screen, but it still actually looked pretty good because the technology is getting pretty good. Um, and I enjoyed it. I had fun. You know, it's completely ridiculous, but what else are we going to expect at this point? Um, ooh, the Big Bird documentary. I am Big Bird. Got to see the Big Bird documentary. Um, learn some stuff. He's awesome. He was awesome. Oh, any other important ones to mention? I don't think so. That's fine. This is going to be the end of the episode. Thank you very much for listening. And until next time, this is Spencer dispensing information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to another episode of the podcast called The Dictionary, hosted by me, Spencer... This is what I have chosen to do with my life. Um, w- the things to say are, please follow social media at DictionaryPod. That is Instagram and Twitter. And the Facebook, I think, is just just type in the dictionary and I think you'll find it. There is a Google Voice number, 917-727-5757. And you can leave a voicemail. And then I would love to listen to what you have to say about whatever, really, just anything. And then uh, I'll probably put in an episode. I have a feeling that I'm going to say that until the end of this podcast and never get one single voicemail. But that's okay. It's a fun game. Um, And then what else? Email dictionarypod at gmail.com. You can uh, email me there. Uh, Some people learn about this podcast and they like the idea and they have their own podcast and they want to be guests on my podcast uh, because they thought it would be fun, I guess. And uh, I think it will be fun. And their podcast actually sounds really great. Uh, human, human, uh-oh, I'm forgetting the name of it. Human worth, human wealth, human, hold on. I got to look it up real quick. Um, yeah, I listened to some uh, some episodes, and I really enjoyed it. And um, I hope to one day, human values, that makes more sense. Human values. Uh, so, yeah, go listen to that. And um, I hope maybe next year. Uh, I'll get to be on that one because I think it would be a lot of fun. Anything else? Patreon? Go go give a $1 a month, get early episodes. Uh, buy some merchandise. Link is in the show notes. Go put these 10 episodes at a time on YouTube and just let it play in the background while you sleep. Okay, the first word in this episode is defalcate or defalcate. Defalcate. D-E- F-A-L-C-A-T-E, verb from 1541, starting with transitive, which is archaic, and the synonyms are deduct and curtail. Deduct and curtail. Well, we did say it was archaic. I mean, I'm more familiar with those words than this word. Um, Intransitive verb is to engage in embezzlement. To engage in embezzlement. So if you are doing some embezzling, you are defalcating, I guess. Hmm. Um, it is from the Latin defalc or defalx with an X, which means sickle, 
Falk or falks means sickle. Hmm. How is a sickle? Is this literally the sickle? Defalcate. Defalcate. Def defalcator? Defalcator. Or would it be defalcator? No. Def defalcator. It's a weird word. That is a noun. The one who is doing the defalcating. And I want to say probably like defalcation? Defalcation? One of those. That would be something too. Probably. Oh, oh, oh. It's the next word. Defalcation. Defalcation. Wait, we got to do a sound effect first. Okay. Defalcation or defalcation or defalcation or defalcation. 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 Why does the why does the emphasis change between the fat, the last word and this one? Defalcate defalcation. That's just how English works. This is a noun from the 15th century. Number one is archaic, and the synonym is deduction, which makes sense because the verb form, the synonym was deduct, both archaic. Two, the act or an instance of embezzling. Embezzling, you are in, you're defalcating the defalcation. Number three, a failure to meet a promise or an expectation. When do people use this word? Do they use this word? Have you used this word? A failure to meet a promise or an expectation. Def defalcation. Hmm. I wish I had heard this word before. It's just a silly word. Next. Whoop, whoop, whoop. De defamation. That's what it is. Defamation. Noun from the 14th century. The act of defaming another. And we're going to learn about defame next. But first, we have to say that the synonym is calumny. Now I have to go back to remind myself. Do you say calumny or calumny? And I don't remember. Um, let's see. C A L U M. N-Y. The microphone got real close to my mouth there. We, let's see. We have it right here. Calumny or calumny. Calumny. So you emphasize the first syllable. Calumny. That is also a weird word. Usually the synonyms help. Did not help in this case. Defamatory is an adjective. And let's now learn about what it means to defame. Because I have sort of an idea in my head, but maybe this will help. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Defame or defame. It is a transitive verb from the 14th century. It's, it's only transitive because, because you, you can defame somebody. It's, it's, you are the one who's doing the action, right? Number one is archaic. The synonym is disgrace. Hmm. Hmm. That makes sense. That does make sense. You have been disgraced and defamed. Defame seems more of like a legal term, though. Number two, to harm the reputation of by libel or slander. And uh, I can't wait to learn the actual definitions of libel and slander because I, again, have sort of a vague idea of what they are, but I wouldn't be able to put it into words, probably. And I think there's a lot of people like me, who are very confused about what those actually mean. But it's, it's about, you know, disgracing somebody, their their name, their face, literally, their reputation. I think I'm defacing myself. Number three is archaic. The synonym is accuse. Accuse. So if you accuse somebody of something bad, then, yeah, then that could be, like, if it, especially if you're lying, if you're accusing somebody of a lie, then you're defacing them. If, but maybe even if it's not a lie, they are being defaced, even if it's true. A synonym is the word malign, M-A-L-I-G-N. And a defamer is a noun that has nothing to do with how famous they are. Well, usually I think they are kind of famous. Let's see, the etymology, got to go all the way down to Latin diffamare, which is from dis plus fama, uh, which is a reputation or fame. 
So dis, no, diffamare, that's the verb. It doesn't say what that means, but the, uh, the, the suffix, the main part of the word, means reputation or fame. So yeah, fame. So yes, you're, you're defaming. That's literally what it is, actually. It's in the name. You're getting rid of their fame. It, maybe not literally. Uh, maybe you're making them more famous, but it's more about you're, you're messing up their, their name, the thing that makes them famous, their reputation. Does that help? If you didn't know? Woo! Next is defamiliarize. Defamiliarize. Transitive verb from 1971. To present or render in an unfamiliar artistic form, usually to stimulate fresh perception. And out of the corner of my eye when I saw the word perception, I thought it said porcupine. To, to present or render in an unfamiliar artistic form, usually to stimulate fresh porcupines. Uh, that is defamiliar. What? I don't even know what that meant, what that said. Present or render in an unfamiliar artistic form, usually to stimulate fresh perception. So uh, what, what are we doing? A new, a new sort of art form to make everything, the perception of things fresh? Ooh, that's a noisy, a noisy truck. Um, hmm. De so you're uh, you're changing it up. You're familiar with something, and then you're defamiliarizing yourself with something, or you're being something is defamiliarizing yourself. What with art? That's the artistic form was mentioned here. Um, but uh, yeah, you're just you're not so uh, <laughs> you're not so familiar with it. I'm the kid's terrible at describing things. Defamiliarization is a noun. I don't always have to describe things. I think you understand it usually, but, uh, you know, I can. I will where I can. Next. Weep. Defang is next. D-E-F-A-N-G. And I very much said that word wrong. It's not defang. It's, it's defang. You're defanging. That's the process. It's like declaw. This is a transitive verb from 1953. To make harmless or less powerful. So maybe not literally taking out the fangs. Although they probably say that. If they got to take out the fangs of a dog or a wolf or something, then yeah, they'd be defanging. But no, this here is, you know, making them, you're, you're, you're metaphorically getting rid of their fangs. The things that make them harmful or powerful, makes them think that they are. And then you take them down a notch. No, no, you are not going to be so harmful. You're going to have less harm. You're going to be less powerful and be harmless. And uh, let's get rid of them things. Wee, 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 wee. Next is defat. This is getting rid of the fat of something. Transitive verb from 1919. Yes, to remove fat from. I'm trying to the, remove the fat from my belly with eating less and exercising more. And I'm not doing a great job, but I'm staying at the same, so that's fine. I'm happy with that. Next, wow, default, or just, let's see. Okay, you can emphasize either syllable, default, default, or default, default. First form, Noun from the 13th century. We got two forms and a whole bunch of definitions with both. So let's do it. One. Uh, what, this is the noun one. Failure to do something required by duty or law. The synonym is neglect. Mm. Number two is archaic. Synonym is fault. Default and fault used to be the same thing. Three. A failure to pay financial debts is a default. You and then later we'll learn. I think. Well, the def, you are defaulting, and you've defaulted, and you don't want to do that. Uh, number four a failure to appear at the required time in a legal proceeding. Hmm. I don't think I, I think the only one I knew that was more like a financial or whatever was uh. Failure to pay on your mortgage or just, just your debt. doesn't have to be a mortgage, just any debt. But failure to appear at the required time in a legal proceeding, that is also default. For B, 
failure to complete in, no, compete, failure to compete in or to finish an appointed contest, as in lost the game by default. This is where you change up the pronunciation. Default and default, depending on how you talk. So, yeah, if you, uh, if you fail, failure to compete in an appointed contest, um, I, guess, I guess would the opposite not work? Can you not say uh, win the game by default? I, th- I feel like that would work, but maybe it more pertains to the, the, the losing side. Hmm. 5A. A selection made usually automatically or without active consideration due to lack of a viable alternative, as in remained the club's president by default. I just know what it means better than what the definition says. I have to think so hard when you read the, some of these definitions. A selection made, so you're making a selection, usually automatically or without active consideration. Um, yeah, it's just like it just happened. You, nobody's, nobody's making any effort to this thing. It just happened, so it's default. Lack of a viable alternative. There's no other thing that we can do, so it just, it just happens on its own. We can't have a vote for uh, what club's president. You probably vote on them. You can't have a vote because nobody else wants to be the club's president or has been uh, suggested to be club president. So, you know, we don't have limits on these things. We like you as club president. Keep on doing it. It's been default. It was done by default. 5B. A selection automatically used by a computer program in the absence of a choice made by the other user. So it's just, boy, we see this a lot, don't we? In um, You can change the defaults. You get a phone and there's a whole bunch of default settings or something will just happen. That's the default. I feel like I see that or mention that a lot. Website options. There's just the default option. Hmm. The etymology says it is from Anglo-French defalir, which means to be lacking or fail. So yeah, this whole thing is about a lacking of something. The lacking of the payments of your mortgage, default. The lacking of an option to vote in the club president, uh, that is default. Uh, What lost the game by default, uh, there was a lack of another team, probably. Um, What was the last one automatically used, uh, chosen by the computer? Uh, There was a lack of an option, a lack of something. There's a phrase, in default to, and that means in the absence of. If there's a lack of something, it's in in default of. I think this is probably a legal term. I I have not heard this one. Um, Was there more to the etymology? Oh, also, yeah, it's just lacking and fail. That's fine. Whip! The second form of default is a verb from the 15th century, starting with intransitive one. To fail to fulfill a contract, agreement, or duty. As, so you you have not been able to do the thing you said you would do. 1A, as 1A, to fail to meet a financial obligation, as in default on a loan. And that, that would be a default. 1B, to fail to appear in court. See how this is all connected? The verb form versus the noun form. 1C. To fail to compete in or to finish an appointed contest. Also, to forfeit a contest by such failure. Number 2. To make a default selection, as in the program defaults to a standard font. Yeah, font, that's definitely a default. All four of these in order... Let's see. I think we're the same. I mean, maybe we had more. Yeah, there was like number two. Anyway, they were basically in order. And that transitive, one, to fail to perform, pay, or make good. 2A, synonym is forfeit. 2B, to exclude a player or a team from a contest by default. All the same world of things, just in different, use them in different ways. Defaulter is a noun. I hope I am never a defaulter on a mortgage. 
I almost had to do that because of that dumb, dumb crash. Whip, whip, whip. Next is DEFCON, all caps, D-E-F-C-O-N. So it stands for something, right? Maybe? Yes. This is a noun from 1962. Any of five levels of U.S. military defense readiness ranked according to the perceived threat to national security. Uh, This stands for defense condition. The def and the con from defense condition. So what is the condition that the defense is in? What is, is this where they say like DEFCON 1, 2, 3, 4, 5? I think it is. We're at DEFCON 5. Oh no, what happens at DEFCON 5? I don't know. I've always wanted to say that. Any of the five levels of U.S. military defense readiness ranked according to the perceived threat to national security. So if there's not much of a threat to national security, you're at DEFCON 1, I guess. Is there a zero? Maybe it's just DEFCON 1. If there was a zero, then they'd say six levels. If there's a lot of security problems, if you are worried, if you've been attacked, if you think you're going to be attacked, you're going to be at DEFCON 5. Are we always at one of these levels, and which one is it? I mean, is there a zero? Can you be no DEFCON? Can there be no problems to national security? Uh, Or are we always at like a two or a three? I should should look into that. Maybe we'll put in a link in the show notes. Whoa. We have one more word for this episode. It is defeasance. D-E-F-E-A-S-A-N-C-E. Defeasance. Noun from the 15th century, 1A1. The termination of a property interest in in accordance with with stipulated conditions as in a deed. What did that just say? The termination of a property interest in accordance with stipulated conditions. So you can't uh, you can't own a property because you didn't meet these conditions or something like that? Hmm. Defeasance. Number 182. An instruction... What is that word? An instrument... Not instra. An instrument... Stating such conditions of limitation is the defeasance. Yeah, the, the, the legal people, the bankers, they use this. Number 1B, a rendering null or void. And two, the synonyms are defeat and overthrow. Defeasance. That is a fun word. Okay, so you don't have to sing a song every time. It's just word of the episode time. We had defalcate, defalcation, defamation, defame, defamiliarize, defang, defat, default, default, defcon, defeasance. Hmm, there were some interesting ones in here. That is for sure. Let's see. Defame? That one was kind of interesting. Uh, (laughs) Um, Yeah, I think I think that that's a fun one to pick. Defame as the word of the episode. Why? I don't know. Oh, uh, I th- I feel like I've heard that used uh, recently in new- news, the news, and uh, maybe I should maybe I should do a little research on um, recent defame cases, defamation cases, because yeah, I should probably know more about what's going on in the world or what these all mean, and. Uh, Maybe you should too. I don't know. It probably doesn't really matter, but we're going to do it anyway. And um, I don't know, like examples of defamation cases. I don't know. Let's learn together. And we'll put it in the show notes. Defame. Defame. I don't think I want to be defamed. That would really suck. I think. All right. This is going to be the end of the episode. Thank you very much for listening, and until next time, this is Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. This is the podcast where I am reading the dictionary and you are listening to me. Ha ha. The first word in this episode, the first section of page 326, is defeasible. D E F E A S I B L E. Adjective from the 15th century. Capable 
of being annulled or made void, as in a defeasible claim. That claim can be made void or annulled, so it is defeasible. And uh, what do we have? Defeat defeasance. That was all. That was very similar stuff, right? Yeah. So it can be defeasible. Don't lose that paperclip. Defeasibility. What is the defeasibility of that thing that is that can be defeased? Noun. That's a noun. Now I think I'm on the letter X for this sound effect, and I'm not sure what to do. The first form of the word defeat is next. Defeat, transitive verb from the 14th century. One is obsolete, and the synonym is destroy. Destroy, defeat. Number two, A, the synonym is nullify, as in defeat an estate. Nullify. So that, that estate does not exist anymore. It has been nullified, defeated. To be. So these, uh, at least the first one, destroy and maybe nullify, they seem like they're maybe more of the original way this word was used. I mean, it still is. Uh, to be. The synonym is the 2A1 definition for the word frustrate. If you would like to go to that which doesn't exist yet, you're going to have to wait a couple years until that exists. In podcast form, as in defeat a hope, frustrate a hope. Three, to win victory over, synonym is beat. To win victory over. Um, as in the example... Defeat the opposing team. Defeat them, beat them. If you what's uh, de- if you do defeat them by default, those words sound kind of similar. You de- you've defeated somebody by default because they were not there, so they were defaulted, and you defeated them. Uh, okay, and then a synonym for all that stuff is the word conquer defeat you have you have destroyed them yeah made them nullified nullified them into frustration defeatable is an adjective next is the second form of defeat noun from 1590 number one frustration by nullification or by prevention of success Frustration by nullification. Yes, you get frustrated when you're nullified. Or by prevention of success. As in, the bill suffered defeat in the Senate. It became nullified and the bill was very frustrated. He just sang the song about how he becomes a bill and then he was no more. If I knew more of that song, I would sing it. Two is obsolete. The synonym is destruction. Three A, an overthrow especially of an army in battle. They got defeated. Sorry, I'm yawning. It's been a long day, a long week, long couple of weeks, so I'm tired. 2B, no, 3B. The loss of a contest. You have been defeated by default. They defeated you. Next is defeatism. Noun from 1918. An attitude of accepting, expecting, or being resigned to defeat. Just, you're like totally cool with just being defeated all the time. Everybody is defeating you. You accept the fact that it is happening, maybe if it's happening. You are expecting it to happen, and then you accept it. Uh, and you're just resigned. You're just like, okay, fine. It's fine. I'm going to be, I'm, I'm, I'm doing defeatism. I'm being a defeatist, which is a noun or an adjective. I don't think that's the best attitude to have. That's just my opinion. Uh, you, 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 because if you, th- you think negative thoughts, then that's what you're going to, that's where the way your life is going to go. You're going to make negative choices. You're going to, whatever, you know, if maybe not everybody thinks that that's a negative thing, but I would I would call it a negative thing if we're working with these, you know, positive negative words. Uh, yeah, so if you just think bad thoughts, you're going to go in a bad direction, and 
Just maybe think more positive thoughts. That's what I think. You can choose your life. Next word. Z- Does that work? Defeature. Defeature. Noun from 1590. Number one is archaic, and the synonym is disfigurement. You are messing up their features. You're defeaturing their face if you disfigure their face. Disfigurement. That still works. Two is also archaic, and the synonym is defeat. You've been, oh, if you're defeated, you're, you have been defeatured. Your features have been messed up. I guess, I don't know. Eh, that one's a stretch. Moving on. Yeah, we got to talk about this. It is the word defecate, verb from 1575. I think it would be funny to have a guest on for this word, but it didn't work out that way. Um, You know, this is a thing that people don't really like to talk about, but I think more people got to talk about it because it's funny. Defecate. It's not that funny. Some people have very uh, specific problems with this word. Probably probably, uh, some personal issues with it, so we're not going to say it's funny for everybody. For a lot of people, we're talking about these things. It's kind of funny. Number one. To free, and also you just have to make it funny. Like, if you don't, then you're just going to be grossed out. It's funny. Number one, to free from impurity or corruption. And number two, to discharge from the anus. Anything coming out of the anus has been defecated. It's also, you have also freeing yourself from impurity or corruption. Is that really what we're saying? That the poop in your butt is quote-unquote impure and corrupt? No, I mean, we're not literally saying that. But, you know, that's the mindset that we're working with here. It's Yes, it's the leftovers. It's the stuff that your body ain't using. Um, okay, that was transitive. Intransitive. Do discharge feces from the bowels. Get rid of the feces. You got to do it. You got to you got to hydrate. You got to eat fiber. You got to eat good so you have regular regular poops. This is what everybody needs. So many people don't have regular poops. It's not that hard to get. Come on. Let's get healthy. Defecation is a noun. This is from the Latin defecatus. Defecatus? Maybe that's how they said it. Defecatus. Uh that is from the verb defecare which is from fike, F-A-E-C, or fikes, which means dregs or lees. The dregs, I've heard of that, like the dregs of the swamp, the the lowest level stuff, but lees, I'm not familiar with that one. Defecation is a noun. If I didn't say it before, I said it, and if I did say it before, I said it again because you needed to hear it. Defecation. I hope you're all very uncomfortable right now. Okay, the next word. Ksh. That, that's not an X sound. Ksh. I don't know what an X sound is. Z. Xylophone. Defect. This one is either emphasis, defect, or defect. First form. Noun from the 15th century. 1A. An imperfection that impairs worth or utility, and the synonym is shortcoming. As in, the grave defects, no, the grave defects in our foreign policy. Why do they need to give examples that are so above my brain level? The grave defects in our foreign policy. I mean, you put in a defect in a diamond, I can understand that. 1B, an imperfection, as a vacancy or an unlike atom, in a crystal lattice. I think the atoms, when they form molecules, they create some sort of lattice. Is that the lattice that we're talking about? And then it turns into a crystal? Uh, But an imperfection, if there's missing an atom or a weird atom, it's a defect. Can you look at the atoms and say that one is uh, it's different? How are they unlike each other, other than the amounts of electrons, protons, and neutrons? Number two, a lack of something necessary for completeness, adequacy, or perfection. 
The synonym is deficiency, lacking in something. This podcast is a defect because it is deficient in humor, content, uh, as in a hearing defect, which I think I am actually getting. Being become, I've all, my brain has always had a prob- problem talking to my ears anyway. So yeah, makes sense. But yeah, it's going away slowly but surely. So bye bye. Another X sound. X, we'll just say X. The second form of defect is a verb. It is just intransitive. Really? Hmm. Seems like it should be both. Number one, uh, from 1596. 1596. Number one, to forsake one, to forsake one cause, party, or nation for another, often because of a change in ideology. Okay, let's, I can understand this one mostly. Break it down. Um, if you are part of a group, a, some sort of group, like a, a country, a nation, um, but then you don't like the way that they do things, you disagree with their politics, and so you, you say, I, I got to leave. I got to get out of here. This is, I, I'm not a fan of this. So you go, you, because of your ideology, your ideas, the things that are in your head, uh, you say, I got to go to another place where we have, you got different ideologies, ones that I agree with, and uh, I defect. That's what you would say. You, you, you can say that. What was that Robin Williams movie where he defects something Moscow? I don't remember. I think I saw it a long time ago. Uh, number two, to leave one situation as a job, often to go over to a rival. Why often? To leave one situation often to go over to a rival. Um, as in the example, the reporter defected to another network. said, I don't want to work for this network anymore. I want to go to another network. Maybe there's a reason you want to leave the network. Maybe you weren't being treated well, or maybe you weren't being paid well, or you disagreed with the politics, so you left. But I don't think it has to be often. I think that could just that's an example of a defect. Defector is a noun. Something like that. Defection is next. Noun from 1546. Conscious abandonment of allegiance or duty as to a person, cause, or doctrine. And the synonym is the word desertion. It's abandoning consciously. You are leaving something on uh, because of because you decided to next oh we could do zippy zippy zip nope nope i don't know what a sound effect is for x the next word is defective first form adjective from the 14th century 1a imperfect in form or function and the synonym is faulty as in a defective pane of glass. You don't want to put in a defective pane of glass, so please go get another one. I want it, everything to be effective. 1B, falling below the norm in structure or in mental or physical function. Falling below the norm in structure. Yep, maybe not so great physically or mentally. You would be considered defective, but... We're not judging. We're this we're not calling. We're not peop, saying that people are having have defective or are defective, but you can use it sort of in this example. Defective eyesight. You could say your eyesight is defective because it doesn't work as great. But nobody is defective. We are all perfectly great. Number two, lacking one or more of the usual forms of grammatical inflection. Lacking one of the usual forms, as in, the word must is a defective verb. Why is the word must defective? Lacking one of the usual forms of grammatical inflection. Now, I don't understand what this is. Defectively is an adverb, and defectiveness is a noun. Second form of defective, noun from 1592. A person who is subnormal physically or mentally. 
And I, again, would like to say we, that's not a, the way to describe people as defective. Hmm. Do, do, do. Next is defeminize, transitive verb from 1907, to divest of feminine qualities or characteristics. And the synonym is masculinize. And clearly, these words are very gendered. Um, but, you know, if you want to personally use these words, feminine, feminize, masculine, masculinize, uh, then you are totally cool to do whatever you want to do. We all have our own ideas of what those words mean, I think. But if you are removing, changing the feminine qualities of a thing, whatever that means to you, then you would be masculinizing it. You both, both would be the same. They're the same, same and opposites, but the same. Defeminization is a noun. And what, I mean, really, what else can you say other than, you know, this should not be a, a judgmental thing by anybody, and you just have to own those words in whatever you want to, and that doesn't, it's, it's, very, it's very subjective, these words, aren't they? I think they are. Next, zoology, I think I said that before. That's the only Z, Z, X. X, what a weird letter. Why, why do we let this letter exist? How does it get used? It's a cuss. You could just do a CKS. Did we need to combine CKS into one letter, X? I feel like it's the most unique of the letters. Other than W, which has three syllables, and all of the other letters have one. Maybe, maybe every letter is weird in some way. I don't think so. There's just a couple. But again, that's subjective too. What, what, how do you look at letters? Okay, the next word, defense. Hmm, defense, defense, or defenseman. Uh, these are the British variations of the same words, but with S's instead of C's. So these are in the D-E-F-E-N-C section, which is just this these two words because the next word is a d-e-f-e-n-d word Zhu. it's defend defend um this is the last word and what's weird here is that the synonym information came right at the halfway point in the column maybe even a little below so that is actually going to get moved into tomorrow's episode i'm so so sorry but sometimes it happens you, will, you have to wait about 24 hours to get your synonym information, or likely one second. Okay, defense, no, defend, defend, verb from the 14th century, starting with transitive 1A, to drive danger or attack away from, as in defend our shores. We don't want this danger coming to attack us, so we are going to drive it away over, away from our shores, our non-shores. 1B, one. And maintain, no, two, to maintain or support in the face of argument or hostile criticism, as in defend a theory. Uh, it's maintain or support in the face of argument. So people are saying, no, 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 your theory's wrong, and you're saying, yes, 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 I stand by, I am defending it. Because I think it is right, and you will understand when I'm done. 1B2, to prove valid by answering questions in an oral exam. And the thing that you are proving valid is a doctoral thesis. I don't know if they say doctoral. I think it's doctoral. Right, Bailey? She doesn't care. She's checking out the wine. Doctoral... Uh, where were we? Doctoral thesis, you're proving it valid, and because they're answer asking you some questions. So again, you're kind of defending it, this thing that you wrote. 1C, to attempt to prevent an opponent from scoring at, as in, elects to defend the South goal. That's what defense is all about. At least the way that I think it, you're defending your thing. Yes, that's what it is. The thing that you cared oh so much about, it's your baby. 
Okay, number two is archaic. The synonyms are prevent and forbid. I forbid you to get into this goal with a little ball, or I forbid you to tear apart, tear apart the thing that I wrote or made. Number three, to act as attorney for. You are the one who is helping out the person who maybe is in some trouble or something. You're, they're, they're, they're saying you did a bad thing, so you have to defend yourself and say, no, 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 I did not do a bad thing. I did a good thing. And the attorney helps with that. Number four, to deny or oppose the right of a plaintiff in regard to what? In regard to what? A suit or a wrong charged. A wrong charged? The synonym is contest or contest. You are contesting the thing. You're saying, no, that's wrong. Number five, to retain or seek to retain against a challenge in a contest. And the example of the thing that you are seeking to retain is a title or a position. So to basically to keep a title or position against uh, you're being challenged. Yeah, as in the example, they successfully defended their championship. Intransitive, one, to take action against attack or challenge. To take action against attack or challenge. Let's take up our action to defend. Number two, to play or be on defense, as in playing deep to defend against a pass. Playing deep to defend against the pass. Catch that ball, get an interception, and run it home. Number three, to play against the high bidder in a card game. Defendable is an adjective. This is from defendere, the Latin verb, defendere. Oh, yes, that one. I am so familiar with it, which is from de plus fendere, which means to strike. Fendere means to strike. So if you're d in it, Getting, adding the D-E, you are, you are striking because it's against you. I guess fendere is fence. I mean, I don't know if fencing, maybe fencing is related. There's probably another word. Fending off, fend something. Yeah. Also is akin to the Old English guth, which means battle or war, and Greek thanin, which means to strike. And I have talked a lot, and my voice is very raw, so let's finish this up with a little song called Word of the Episode. Oh, Bailey, you want to sing? Come sing. Word of the Episode. Meow, meow. Word of the Episode. Do it. The one time she doesn't do it. Okay, we had today Defeasible, Defeat, Defeat, Defeatism, Defeature, Defecate, Defect, defect, defection, defective, defective, defeminize, defense, and defend. And the synonym information for defend will be in tomorrow's episode. It's the very first thing I'm going to read to you. I'm going to have to pick defecate as the word of the episode because, of course, I do. Because it's because it's defecate. It's the, also the most unique word here in this list for today. Defecate, we all do it. Yeah, if not, get that checked out. Try to get into a habit of doing it every day. Yay, yay. All right. You got two songs. Thank you very much for listening. And until next time, this is Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. This is the podcast where I, Spencer, am reading the dictionary. And it's, um, it's you know, it's, it's part educational and part maybe slightly funny. I, I hope that you are... Um, educated. I hope that you learn from this podcast. I am learning from this podcast, and I also hope that you get some level of entertainment out of it at times. It's not going to be 100%. It's not, it's not comedy wall-to-wall. It, that's just impossible. But, you know, every once in a while, maybe there is some entertainment for you. Okay, we, we have to start. This episode is weird, uh, we are starting with the synonym information for the word defend, D-E-F-E-N-D. Mm, yep, 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 yep. Okay, the synonym information for defend. It says defend, 
protect, shield, guard, and safeguard mean to keep secure from danger or against attack. Stopping the attack and danger. Defend denotes warding off actual or threatened attack. So there's actually something happening. We are defending against it. Could be happening right now. As in, defend the country. Protect implies the use of something as a covering, as a bar to the admission or impact of what may attack or injure. As in, a hard hat to protect your head. Yeah, if you are going to be in an area where something might fall on your head, you should probably be wearing a hard hat. Um, so yes, it's, uh, it's, it's the thing, it's a covering, there's an impact coming, it could be attacking you, <laughs> something's coming down, maybe there's a bird coming to attack your head, you gotta wear a hard hat, that will, that will definitely protect your head from, from a bird attack. Shield suggests protective intervention in imminent danger or actual attack. Attack, there's no ED at the end of that word, as in, shielded her eyes from the sun with her hand. Stopping something that's very similar to protect. You could protect your eyes, uh, but this one is uh, a protective intervention in imminent danger or actual attack. And I don't think the sun is attacking your eyes. It might feel like that sometimes. It does feel like that to me sometimes. I did just buy some sunglasses, and those are definitely good at shielding my eyes from the sun. And my, my eyes are very sensitive to the light. Guard implies protecting with vigilance and force against expected danger, as in White House entrances are well guarded. There's people stand in guard because they and they are very very vi vigilant. Um, there, there it's expected danger. There, there may be not something specifically happening, but there could be something. That's why they're there. Uh, and of course, I think here, given this example, we have to uh, specifically shout out the people, the guards at the Capitol on January 6th. How can I not mention that? They did a really good job uh, guarding, doing what they could to do what they could to stop people from coming in uh, and taking over. But, you know, you can only do so much in that given situation. But, um, man, I, I'm really impressed with uh, what they had to deal with and what they did to stop people. And my hat goes off to all you you guards. You, what are they? The Capitol Police is what they are. And the last synonym, safeguard, implies taking precautionary protective measures against merely possible danger. As in, our civil liberties must be safeguarded. Another synonym is the word maintain. Just as in addition is the word maintain. So that was the synonym information for defend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The next word is defendant. That is with a D-A-N-T at the end. This is the first form noun from the 14th century. And I guess it says in legal circles, it is often pronounced defendant. I think it's more dant than dent. Defendant. Defendant? It is a person required to make answer in a legal action or suit. To make answer. It says com compare to plaintiff, and that would be the opposite. The plaintiff is the one who is saying, you defendant over there, you did something bad, so you have to make answer to this legal action or suit that I'm putting on you, I think, Think I got that right? Yeah. I think that's it for defendant. But there is a second form. You! Defendant adjective from the 15th century. Being on the defensive. And the synonym is defending. If you are defending against something, you are the defendant. Maybe the, the, the defense on the football team is their defendant. Next word. Yep, yep. Defender. Noun from the 14th century. Defender. Bender the defender. Number one. One that defends. 
I, I often just go to sports. When you think of defending, defendant, defender, it's the, in sports, you're defending your goal because there's people coming at you. Number two, here we go. A player in a sport assigned to a defensive position. And the example of the sport is football, although that's that's just one of many, many. I mean, pretty much all, almost all sports have an, an offense and a defense. Very many of them. And which football are we talking about? American football, European football, or and I, guess I shouldn't say European, I should say the rest of the world football. Defender. Defend your goal. Defense. We're coming up to that one soon. Next word. It is defenestration. One of the best words just all around. Defenestration. Noun from 1620. I first learned about this word when I was in Latin class in a freshman year of high school. And I was like, oh, this is fantastic. Number one, a throwing of a person or thing out of a window is defenestration. <laughs> this will never get old to me. Number two, a usually swift dismissal or expulsion. And the example here is from a political party or office. I was not aware of this one. Uh, if somebody has been swiftly dismissed or expelled from a political party or an office, you could call that defenestration. That's interesting. Um, defenestrate is a transitive verb. Go, you got to go defenestrate a thing when you're really mad at somebody and you won't let them in. You got to defenestrate their clothes onto the sidewalk. What is this from? It is from D-E, day, or D, plus the Latin word fenestra, which means window. Fenestra is window. Defenestration. D fenestrate and uh well, yeah i learned about this and uh, we learned the word fenestra in latin and then she said there's a word in english which i had never heard before because i was a young lad defenestration and then i learned either she taught us this or told us this or i learned later that in the there was a calvin and hobbes epi uh, episode i wish there was an episode i wish it was a cartoon a series no uh, a Calvin and Hobbes comic strip that used this word. So maybe I will find it and I will post it to social media or put a link in the show notes. It's a fantastic word. Next. You. Defense. Now this one is actually pronounced defense. And uh, I think, let's see, this is the first form. So maybe the second form is emphasized the other way. Defense. Defense. Yeah. Actually, it says... As antonym of offense, it is often pronounced defense. So there we go. We have defense, and then when you're talking about the opposite to offense, it is pronounced defense. Noun from the 14th century, 1A, the act or action of defending, as in the defense of our country. Also as in speak out in defense of justice. Yes, we have to defend justice and equality and things, good things. 1B, a defendant's denial, answer, or plea. So when the person, the defendant, is uh, is in, in a trial, the thing that they say to say, no, no, I, I'm good, I didn't do the thing that I you say I did, that is their defense. What is your defense, defendant? My defense is that I just didn't do it and I did something else. 2A, capability of resisting attack to be defensive play or ability as in a player known for good defense then they should probably be a defender if they've got good defense okay 3a means or method of defending or protecting oneself one's team or another also, a defensive structure. What is a defensive structure? Just a wall? A wall would be a defensive structure. Maybe it's got spikes on it. Maybe that's all you need. 3B, an argument in support or justification. That's kind of similar to the defendant given a, a defense, a defense, 
Uh, but yes, if you're arguing in support of something, you are defending it. You are defending its justice. 3C. The collected facts and method adopted by a defendant to protect and defend against a plaintiff's action. So yeah, that again, similar to the uh, defendant's denial, answer, or plea, it's all of this stuff to help the defendant is the defense, or the defense, whichever way you want to pronounce that word. All of the facts and things. 3D. A sequence of moves available in chess to the second player in the opening. So the first, the, the player who's got the white or light uh, pieces goes first, and then the second player, the next player who has the, the black or the dark pieces, they go next, and uh, basically they are they have to play defense because the first one went first, and so they're on the offense, and that's how it works. What are, what are all their defensive moves? 4A, a defending party or group, as in a court of law, as in the defense rests. The group of people helping the defendant they are the defense, and then they got tired, and they said, we don't have any more things to say. We presented all of our facts, and now it's time to rest. Nap time. 4B, a defensive team. Maybe it's a soccer team. Maybe it's a baseball team. Number five, the military and industrial aggregate that authorizes and supervises arms production. As in, appropriations for defense or defense probably defense appropriations for defense and that's yeah it's the military they they gotta be ready to defend their country if somebody comes over and attacks certain countries it's uh it goes the other way around they have all this stuff but they go on the offense also is in defense contract Co companies have a contract together to uh to make things and provide things for defense the military defense defenseless is an adjective there is no fences up around their property hmm is there is there a connection between the word defense and an actual fence that you put up on your property it's it it's a difference between an s and a c but yes i think i think there must be we'll we'll see what the etymology says defenselessly is an adverb and defenselessness is a noun with lots of s sounds defenselessness this stuff is defenselessness okay etymology time from the latin the lower latin defensa which means vengeance ooh yeah if somebody's coming at you you got to defend you might have to take some vengeance on them that is from the Latin, which is the feminine of defensus, which is from the verb defendere, which doesn't say what it means, but I have to assume it just means, you know, to defend. Nothing about fences, though. Next word. You. If you don't know, I have to say this every once in a while. The sound effect in between each word is just to designate that it's time for the next word, and it's just something, some, some weird sound. Second form of defense. Transitive verb from 1950. To take specific defensive action against. And the example is an opposing team or player or an offensive play. So you are, uh, you are taking defensive action against an opposing team or an opposing player or just an offensive play. An offensive play, the team has the ball and they're coming towards your goal and then you have to take up the defense. Next word. Ya, 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 ya. Defenseman. Noun from 1895. A player in a sport, as hockey, who is assigned to a defensive zone or position, which means they're probably closer to their goal to defend their goal than the other team's goal. So let's see. We've had an example for hockey. We've had an example for football. And I think, was there a soccer one too? I'm trying to find it. Maybe that was just in my brain. But uh, yeah, it's, you know, you got you to gotta mix up the examples. Next word. Yay! Defense 
mechanism. Defense mechanism. Two words. Noun from 1913. One. An often unconscious mental process as repression that makes possible compromise solutions to personal problems. All right. So what what is what is this? We break it down a little bit. Um, so it's usually something that you, you're not aware that you're doing. So that's why it's unconscious. You're not consciously doing a defense mechanism. It just happens based on your life. What's happened in your life? So it's a mental process. Like So repression is an example of a defense mechanism. Just sort of, maybe you went through a traumatic situation and you're repressing the memory, repressing the feelings, you're pushing them down, deep down. And so that is an example of, of a defense mechanism um, because it, then it makes it possible to compromise solutions to personal problems. So it's a personal problem and you're just, you're compromising your life. I don't know, that, I'm not describing it great. What are examples of other defense mechanisms? Well, I think a pretty common one is making jokes. So um, if a lot of people, comedians usually, they just want to make jokes, make them sort of feel better about themselves or uh, let's see, feel better or just uh, um, divert, divert attention or, or something. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a good defense mechanism. Is it the most healthy thing to do? Not always, but it's something. I think we all, we all got something. I'm sure, I'm sure humor and joking is, is one of mine. Number two, a defensive reaction by an organism. So any sort of organism, a, a, an animal, an organ, literally an organ, a cell, something, if it's, if it's being attacked, it has to defend itself because it's not going to just lay down and rest. Uh, it's going to defend itself. And so that would be a defense mechanism. Uh, a porcupine. Its defense mechanism is to po shoot up its pokies and shoot them out. A uh, skunk. It's going to spray you and make it all stinky. Defense mechanisms. Next word. Eww. Defensible. Adjective from the 14th century capable of being defended is just it's defensible you can defend it your your big castle can be defended as in defensible theories also as in a defensible hill yes we have to defend the hill people want that hill it's a very nice hill defensibility is a noun and defensibly is an adverb there is one more word for this episode. You, 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 and you. Defensive. D-E-F-E-N-S-I-V-E. -E -E. First form, adjective from the 14th century, and the second form will be in tomorrow's episode, so you can look forward to that. One, serving to defend or protect, as in defensive fortifications. Put up, put up those fortifications so it's easier to defend. 2A. Devoted to resisting or preventing aggression or attack. As in, defensive behavior. Devoted to resisting or preventing aggression or attack. Uh, yes, we don't, we, don't want, we don't want to be attacked in any way, physically or emotionally. So we put up some defensive behavior. That could, look, that could be lots of things. To be of or relating to the attempt to keep an opponent from scoring in a game or contest, as in a player with good defensive skills. They're very good at stopping the other team from scoring on them. 3A. Valuable in defensive play, as in a defensive card in bridge. Hmm. I, I, I Like I've said before, I haven't really pl played bridge, so what would be a defensive card? It's valuable in a defensive play. You have, you're stopping the other team from making that point. It looks like they're about to make the point, and they think they're going to make the point. I don't know if that's the right terminology, but that's what I'm saying. But then you put down your card, and you have stopped them. 3B. Designed to keep an opponent from being the highest bidder. I think this is also bridge. As in, a defensive bid. 
Defensively is an adverb, and defensiveness is a noun. I think it's time to pick a word of the episode. So today we had the synonym information for defend, defendant, defendant, defender, defenestration, defense, or defense, defense, defenseman, defense mechanism, defensible, and defensive. Well, I'm tempted to pick defense mechanism. I think that's, uh, it's just a really interesting thing that we do unconsciously. Um, I don't know. I think that just jokes, I think, is the first thing that I can think of uh, for defense mechanism. But there's lots of things that we do. Uh, but I am going to pick defenestration as the word of the episode because I think it is just, I think it's just silly that there's a word that means to throw something out of a window in the first place. I think that's great. And, you know, it makes sense. We, we throw things out of windows often enough. And, and there's it's just one of those very specific, very unique words that has its place in the world. And uh, anytime, anytime uh, I would talk about my Latin class when I was in high school or something, this was always the best example of how, like, how English came from Latin, largely Latin. And uh, yeah, it's great. Defenestration. Let's throw all the things out of a window. Defenestrate. Defenestrate. Defenestration. That is going to be the end of this episode. Thank you very much for listening. I don't know what you're getting out of it, but hopefully it's something. Laughter at me is perfectly fine. Don't even feel bad about that. This has been Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye. Well, hello, word nerds. What? How? Hi. It's it's great to have you here. It's so wonderful. Um, yeah, I think we just need to get into the words because that is what everybody is here for. Maybe someday there will be other things that you come here for. The first word in this episode is the second form of defensive. Noun from 1601. So it's just a defensive position. That's all it is, is the defensive is the def defensive position. But there is a phrase on the defensive, and that is in the state or condition of being prepared or required to defend against attack or criticism, as in keeping his political rivals on the defensive. They have to defend the things that he says. Yes. Okay, the next word. Zoop. Defensive medicine. Two words, noun from 1973. The practice of ordering medical tests, procedures, or consultations of doubtful clinical value in order to protect the prescribing physician from malpractice suits. Uh, defensive medicine. So you get you get a bunch of tests and things done to to is it is this something that you're doing for yourself like you're a doctor and you order these tests so you don't uh, get a suit for malpractice which is basically saying so you're basically doing your due diligence to to say no look I I did all the things that I was supposed to do the practice of ordering medical tests procedures or consultations of doubtful clinical value hmm. So there's not much value to these tests. This is what I'm thinking. In order to protect the prescribing physician from malpractice suits. I don't know. There's something There's something I'm missing, but um, yeah. So how, how does something of doubtful value protect the physician? That I'm not sure about, but it's it's something, something like that. Next word. Zip, 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 zip. Defer. D-E-F-E-R. First form, verb, just a transitive verb from the 14th century. One, synonyms are put off and delay. We are going to defer that to another time over there. Number two, to postpone induction of into military service. And the thing, induction of what? Induction of a person into military service. Deferrer. Deferrer is a noun. 
There are synonyms for the word defer. Defer, postpone, suspend, and stay mean to delay an action or proceeding. Defer implies a deliberate putting off to a later time. As in, deferred buying a car until spring. We can't buy a car now, we will wait until spring. Postpone implies an intentional deferring usually to a definite time. As in, the game is postponed until Saturday. It's a very specific time. I think you can also say we postponed buying a car until spring, but that's okay. We, we, we can say defer. Suspend implies temporary stoppage with an added suggestion of waiting until some condition is satisfied. So it's not a specific time, just at some point in the future, we are suspending a thing. What? Like, business will be suspended while repairs are underway. We don't know exactly when the repairs are going to be done, so we're just suspending operations. They're hanging there out in the air, suspended. Stay often suggests the stopping or checking by an intervening agency or authority, as in, the governor stayed the execution. Just stay, stay, hold on, stay, stay, wait, we don't know when, just stay there. Come here, stay, come here, stay. Um, the etymology for defer is from the Latin differer, dif, differe. I don't know how to say that. So differe, that means to postpone or be different. Hmm, that's kind of interesting. Be different. There's more of the word differ. Yeah, interesting. Uh, there was the Middle French also differer. So yeah. Interesting, that's be different and postpone. Okay, we're going to be make it be different from what it is now, and it's going to be the thing later. I don't know. Zazu. Second form of defer is a verb from the 15th century. So the last one was a transitive verb, and this one is also a verb starting with transitive, but it must be must be different in some way. This one is... To delegate to another, as in, he could defer his job to no one. And that is a quote from J.A. Michener, M-I-C-H-E-N-E-R. To delegate to another. Somebody else is going to do this thing. And now we have intransitive. To submit to another's wishes, opinion, or governance, usually through deference or respect. As in, deferred to her father's wishes. Just say, um, you know what? I'm I I can't do this thing. Why don't Why don't you? Um, I I leave the decision up to you. Submitting to another's wishes. A synonym is the word world. It's the word yield. Yielding to uh to something else. Is there any etymology that we want to talk about? Uh, it's from the lower Latin, defere. So the, for the first form of defer, it was the Latin differe, D-I-F-F-E-R-R-E. -R -R -E, and this one is defere, and I don't know if I'm pronouncing this correctly, but it is spelled D-E-F-E-R-R-E, -E, um, which means to bring down or just bring. And that is from de plus ferre, which means to carry. And there's more at the word bear, spelled like the animal but I don't think we're talking about the animal. Next word. Zewoopipop. Deference. Uh, you can have three syllables or two syllables. Deference or deference. Noun from 1660. Respect and esteem do a superior or elder. You have to give respect or esteem to a superior or an elder. Also, affected or ingratiating regard for another's wishes. Synonym is the word honor. There's a phrase, in deference to, and that means in consideration of, as in, returned early in deference to her parents' wishes. So she was giving some respect and esteem to her parents. They wished that she would come home early, and so she, she gave them deference. She deferred 
her to uh, to their wishes. Next word, zew, deferent, or deferent. Adjective from 1822. The synonym is deferential, which is actually our next word. Zai, deferential. Adjective from 1822. Showing or expressing deference, as in deferential attention. Deferentially is an adverb. Deferential attention is that uh, you're giving you're giving deference to something. Yeah, I think think that's it. That's it. Good job. Great. Okay, next. Zip, deferment. Deferment is next. Noun from 1607. The act of delaying or postponing, specifically, official postponement postponement of military service. Yeah, this is like the first form of defer, which was putting off or delaying. Uh, you, you got deferment, delaying, or postponing. That's all it is. Next word. I'm trying to... My brain is trying to think of other ways to make a sound effect that starts with a Z. Because that's what we chose to do today. Zoop. They're all the same sounds. Deferable. Adjective from 1943. Capable of or suitable or eligible for being deferred. Deferable is a noun as well as an adjective. If a person is not going to go to military service right away, they are deferable. They're having a deferment and they will defer. Next word. Zai. Deferral. Deferral. D-E. F-E-R-R-A-L, deferral. Noun from 1865, the act of delaying. Just any sort of delaying is a deferral. Synonym is postponement. we got to postpone the thing. Sorry, I just don't, I don't really have a lot of things to say about all these words. It's just, there's, it's, yep, I was never deferred, f- f- deferring things. I didn't go to military time. Next word. Zazazazazazazazazaza. Deferred. Adjective from 1651. One. Withheld for or until a stated time, as in a deferred payment. If you can't make your payments on time, you might have to defer your payments until another time. This is all, this is all what it's all about. Deferring, waiting, postponing, delaying. Two, charged in cases of delayed handling, as in a deferred rate. Charged in cases of delayed handling. I don't know what that means. When I think of, when I hear charged in cases, I think of a legal thing, but I I don't know if that's what we're talking about. Next word. Zewiu. How do we say this word? deference deference no 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 defervescence yes i read this before defervescence i think this is a fascinating word defer or it could also be defer defervescence defervescence noun from 1866 the subsidence of a fever the subsidence of a fever so i think that's when the fever is going down it's subsiding. Defervescence. Okay, what? What is this word? It is from the German defervescence, from the Latin defervescent, or defervescens, which is from the verb defervescere, defervescere, and that means to stop boiling. There is a word in Latin that means to stop boiling. Defervescere. Oh, boy, that is from day plus fervescere, which means to begin to boil. I think it makes sense. And there is more at the word effervesce. Effervesce. I mean, maybe my definition of effervesce is different. Maybe it's something about boiling? I don't know. Effervesce. If you have effervescence, oh, this, this, this is fascinating to me. This is a great word. This is, this is like defenestration. Defervescence? 
is uh, no more fever. If you got a fever, the blood is not literally boiling, but it's warm and hot. You, your body is warming up to uh, because maybe you got an infection or something going on. It's trying to it's trying to fight off a thing. But as your fever goes away, you are in. Would you be in defervescence? Would you have defervescence? Oh, this is a fantastic word. Next word. Defer. No, 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 no. I think it would be defer. And the next word is going to be similarly odd. But this first one, defer, D-E-F-F-E-R, is the comparative of the word deaf. And I think that might be the one that's, is it cool? Oh, deaf is cool. Uh, let's just quickly go back. Yes, because the other one was the abbreviation. So, deaf and defer. And then we have zoop, deafest. That is the superlative of deaf. Deaf, defer, deafest. And why do these need to have their own entries in the book? I'm not sure why. They are mentioned at the word deaf. After it says adjective, it mentions defer and deafest. But why? I don't understand why they're why they have their own entries. I've never seen this. I don't think that that is very interesting. All right, we have one more word for this episode. What are we gonna do for the sound effect? We could do zippity doo dah, but that has some negative connotations from that Disney movie back in the day. So we're gonna say defiance is the last word in this episode. D e f i a n c e noun from the 15th century one the act or an instance of defying and the synonym is challenge i'm gonna defy you just i don't like what i don't like what you gotta say i'm gonna do my own thing i'm gonna be defiant number two disposition to resist i like to resist so i that's my disposition i have lots of defiance Here's the thing. I don't I don't really have a lot of defiance. And also for that number 2 definition, it says willingness to contend or fight. I'm ready to to fight with you, to argue with you, to resist you. Again, that's not really me. I t- I tend not to do that. I don't like conflict. Uh although, I'm trying to be better. There is a phrase, in defiance of, and that means contrary to. The synonym is despite as in, seemingly in defiance of the laws of physics. Who? What? What is seemingly in defiance of the laws of physics? What is fighting physics, challenging physics? It probably isn't, but it seems to. Maybe it's a magic trick. I gotta read the words. I gotta read them. I gotta read them so we can pick a word of the episode. We had defensive, defense. Meta, no, defensive medicine, defer, defer, deference, deferent, or that would be deferent, deferential, deferment, deferable, deferral, deferred, defervescence, defer, defist, and defiance. Hmm. I think it is good to be uh, defiant. That's actually going to be the first word in the next episode. So have defiance, maybe defi, hmm, hmm. But I mean, you know, defervescence, that one, that one was, that was great. Uh, learned a lot about that word. Um, defensive, de, 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 yeah, yep. Yeah, I think that one was just the most interesting to me. Defervescence. Defervescence. When you're not so sick anymore, you've got defervescence. That is the end of the episode. Thank God it's here. This has been Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. I'm going to try and be a little more chill and quiet today. Turned up the volume. Hey, how are you doing? Um, if uh, I would love it if you could write a review about this podcast. If you are a regular listener, I think you've definitely heard this before, and you should go write a review if you have feelings about this show. And uh, go ahead and share it. Subscribe to it. Join the Patreon if you want to get episodes really early, like days or weeks, maybe even months in advance. No, we haven't. I don't know if we've hit that point yet. 
And um, you can buy merchandise. You can follow this show on Twitter and Instagram at DictionaryPod. You can email this show, DictionaryPod at gmail.com, and I will reply to you. Uh, let's see. Uh, do you have a podcast? Do you want to do s- swap guest h- spots? Swap ad swaps? Um, e- what's, what, uh, well, what else? What else? My personal stuff is at Spejampar, S-P-E-J-A-M-P-A-R. And uh, there's a Google Voice number. If you want to call it, leave a message. Maybe I'll put it in an episode. I won't. If you say don't put it in an episode, then I won't. You can just come and say hi. Just do that, 917-727-5757. Oh, I think, okay, I got all the credit things. Uh, there's, there's no other people involved in this show. It's just me, so I can't say thank you to this person for the photography and thank you to this person for all the editing because it's, it's just me. It's, I'm the one that you get. Okay, the first word in this episode is defiant, D E. F-I-A-N-T, adjective from 1583, and this is just full of or showing defiance. If you have so much defiance to show, you're, you're filled with it, you just want to, you just want to be defiant, you are defiant. <laughs> I hate it when I use the word in the definition. Uh, the synonyms for defiant are bold and impudent, as in defiant rebels, also as in a defiant refusal. I feel like those are a little redundant. Defiant rebels? That's the whole point of rebels, is that they are defiant. They are defying the thing that they are rebelling against. Defiantly is an adverb. This is just from old French, the verb Defier, which means to defy. And uh, the, the word defy, um, let's see, so we had uh, defiance yesterday, we have defiant here, but the word defy, we're not going to see until one, two, three, four, like five episodes from now. Okay, I got to come up with a sound effect, and we're just going to go. The next word is defibrillator. It's a little bit of a hard word to say, so you, you have to you have to practice. Defibrillator. Defibrillator. Noun from 1952. An electronic device that applies an electric shock to restore the rhythm of a, fri- a fibrillating heart. I don't know why my mouth wants to either remove R sounds or add R sounds. Uh, fibrillating? I don't think I've heard of the, that word by itself. It's always in context with defibrillator. So, hoo hoo hoo. I mean, we can we can f- figure out what fibrillating heart means, um, because the whole point of the defibrillator is to get the heart to pump again. So, fibrillating is it's it's freaking out. It's it's either stopped or it's acting very erratically. More likely, it's stopped. So that's uh, that's what fibrillating means. Um, yeah, th- I think this is the thing these days. They have the two paddles, and it's electric. It's electric, and you got to stay away from it. And they say clear, and then they put it on the front of the chest and the side because the heart is closer to the left side. And then they give it a shock and see if they can get it going again because the heart is moving just from electric impulses. That's all it is. The brain is sending electric impulses to all the other parts. Defibrillate is a transitive verb, and defibrillation is a noun. So yeah, this is a highly important uh, invention. What would, what would life be like if we didn't have this? All we would have is CPR, and that does a pretty good job, but not all the time. Sometimes you need the defibrillator. It's going to stop the fibrillating. Next. It is the word defibrinate, defibrinate, or you could say defibrinate, if you want to say it that way. This is a transitive verb from 1845. To remove fibrin from, and the example of the thing that you were removing it from is blood. 
to remove fibrin from blood. D, that's why some people say defibrinate, but you can also say defibrinate. Defibrination is a noun. And what, what is fibrin? I'm not, I'm not entirely sure, but um, maybe you don't want it in the blood. Both with fibrillating and fibrin, you have to wait a couple of years to the Fs until we get there to learn about that. That is the weird sound effect for today. The next word is deficiency. D-E-F-I-C-I-E-N-C-Y. I spelled it because there's the S-H sound in the middle, and I wanted you to know that it was not spelled with an S-H. Deficiency is a noun from 1603. 1. The quality or state of being deficient. And the synonym is inadequacy. You are deficient in something. You are lacking in something. You are inadequate in some way. I'm not saying you specifically. You are not inadequate in any way. But something can be inadequate or have deficient, uh, be deficient and have deficiency. 2. An amount that is lacking or inadequate. So the amount that something is lacking it would be the deficiency. Uh, there is a synonym, the word shortage. So there is a shortage of food. We have a deficiency in food. A lot of countries around the world are deficient in just food. And there are a lot of people who can do a lot of things to fix that but they choose not to. There's a lot of people who are trying to, I, I mean, this was my own example of food shortage, but uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of people who are trying to genetically modify foods, which has really helped in a lot of ways, but there are also people who have so much money that they can just buy food and send it over to places that are lacking in food. Okay, so number two is an amount that is lacking or inadequate as 2A. A shortage of substances necessary to health. Yes, you need the substances. A lot of people, a lot of people, the American diet, and it's spreading around through other countries, the the typical diet is lacking. It has a deficiency in the nutrients that we need, the fibers that we need. So, yeah. I, I know I talk about this a lot, but I think just from a health standpoint... It's just really important to be really conscious of what you're eating because if you don't, you're going to have a whole lot of health problems. And I have to say, this is not, this is not like a skinny fat kind of thing. It's just health. You you could be lots of different sizes and still be healthy. Moving on to 2B for deficiency, we have the 2B1 definition for the word deletion, which that's going to be later. Next word is deficiency disease. Two words, noun from 1912, 110 years ago. It is a disease like scurvy caused by a lack of essential dietary elements and especially a vitamin or mineral. So make sure you get all your vitamins and minerals and maybe we should put a link in the show notes about what scurvy is specifically. The, the, I think, you know, pirates, people on boats back in the day, they used to get scurvy because they probably, they couldn't store all the necessary foods that they would need. So they might eat a lot of one kind of food and then not a whole lot of another kind of food. And so, yeah, any disease where you're just not getting enough of the good stuff in your body is a defici- deficiency disease. <laughs> The next word is deficiency. Deficient. There's a T at the end. So we had deficiency, and this is deficient. First form. Adjective from 1581. 1. Lacking in some necessary quality or element. As in, (laughs) deficient in judgment. There's a lot of people who are deficient in judgment. They just make decisions and just go with it. Sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. Two, not up to a normal standard or complement. And the synonym is defective. Defective. Uh, Not up to normal standards or, yep, you're just deficient in 
standards. Uh, there's an example. Deficient strength. You gotta... I mean, unless you have some sort of uh, physical ailment, disease, uh, whatever, um, you know, do some exercises so you can get up to some normal level of strength and you can, you don't, you don't need help all the time. But again, not everybody can do that. Deficiently is an adverb. This is from the Latin verb deficere, D-E-F-I, care, and that means to be wanting. So I, I guess maybe they would use that in context of a person to be wanting something. But, um, but yeah, the whole idea of deficient is that there's not enough of a thing. So you, you want more of it. You need more of it. You need more vitamins and minerals so you don't get scurvy. And there's more at the word defect. Defect or defect, but probably defect. The next word. Deficient second form, noun from 1906. And this is just one that is deficient. A person or a thing that is deficient is called a deficient. And I don't think that this is a word that is or should be used anymore because the example here is a mental deficient. Yeah, this is from 1906. They probably used this for a number of decades, but I, I just feel like it doesn't get used anymore. Good, good for that. You know, a mental deficient, somebody who, according to this example, is one who does not have as much of the mental capability as maybe a quote-unquote normal person, and so they would call him a deficient. And there are a lot of other words like deficient that uh, people would use to describe other human beings. And uh, we are, we're a whole lot smarter as a culture now to not use those words and understand maybe why they were the way they were. And that's a whole other world. I'm sure we'll talk about it again coming up someday in this podcast. Next word. <laughs> Deficit is this word. D-E-F-I-C-I-T. Deficit. And the British will say deficit or deficit. Hmm, so many different words. Deficit, deficit, or deficit. That's the way that I like to say it. This is a noun from 1782. 1A1 is deficiency in amount or quality, as in a deficit in rainfall. So when there is not enough of a thing, there is a deficit of that. It's just not enough. Dry season, droughts, that would be, there is a deficit in rainfall because we don't have enough of it. 1A2, a lack or impairment in a functional capacity. And the synonym is cognitive deficits. I probably do have a bit of a cognitive deficit. Also is in a hearing deficit. And I also definitely have a hearing deficit. Not enough to be a problem yet, but just wait until I'm older. 1B, the synonym is disadvantage, as in scored two runs to overcome a 2-1 deficit. So according to the team that only had one point, they were in a deficit, a points deficit, but they came back they excited the crowd when they scored two runs. It's probably baseball, right? They scored two runs, and then they had three points, and the other team only had two points. So the other team had a 3-2 deficit, or maybe a 2-3 deficit. Oh, yes, that was so exciting. 2A, an excess of expenditure over revenue. So when you are... I think this is what you're, you're spending more than you're making. There's a deficit because you have less money than you want to, probably. An excess of expenditure over revenue. I think that's what that means. To be a loss in business operations. Where did they go? We lost them. We have a deficit. The etymology is similar to what we had before from the Latin deficit which is, it is wanting, 
And then, yeah, we saw before uh, defecare, that is to be wanting. Yes, to be wanting. And then there's the word deficit, which is spelled the same way, but it's they pronounce it differently. It is wanting. Because that is the third person singular present indicative of deficare. <laughs> Next is deficit spending. Two words Noun from 1938, the spending of public funds raised by borrowing rather than by taxation. So you are borrowing money. You are going into a deficit. You're going into debt to, to raise public funds um, opposed to taxation, which is where people just give you money based on their taxes and then you don't have to pay them back. So I'm sure that there are specific situations when you would want to do this. Uh, you don't want to raise people's taxes or add more taxes, but then you, you, you might have to pay it back. Deficit spending. You're spending money uh, because, and that's putting you into a deficit. <laughs> Next is defier. D-E-F-I-E-R. Don't walk into defier. It's very hot. Noun from 1584 is just one that defies, as in, a defier of convention. They defy convention. They don't want to go along with what other people consider, uh, how do we, convention? Um, it's not a convention. It's not a con that you go to. Um, you know, it's just like what's considered normal. I think, I think a lot of us like to be defiers sometimes. I, I like to. I don't want to always go with the flow. Next. <laughs> defilade or defilade. D-E-F-I-L-A-D-E. -E. Defilade. That's how it's spelled. But yes, I can see how somebody would want to pronounce it defilade. This is a transitive verb from 1828, to arrange so as to protect the lines from frontal or enfilading fire and the interior from fire from above or behind. Wow, this was very complicated. Okay, so the thing that you might be arranging are fortifications. So you're fortifying maybe a building so to arrange fortifications so as to protect the lines from frontal or enfilading fire. You're, you're protecting your military from people who are shooting at you. And then also you're protecting the interior from fire. Again, like gunfire or arrow fire. And then also from above or behind. Hmm. I think I need a little bit of a context how you would use this enfilade. So it's just the act of, of fortifying, basically, is enfilade. Yeah. Uh, defilade, or did what I say enfilade? No, the, I, the, see, the word enfilade is in the etymology because um, it's de plus filade or filade, as in the word enfilade or enfilade. So that would be, what would that be? The opposite? It would be not protecting your lines from frontal fire? Hmm. Yeah, defilade, defilade is also a noun. Next is defile or defile. D or de. D E F I L E. First form. Verb, is it only transitive? I think it might only be transitive. Uh, from the 14th century, and there are no numbers. One definition, and then five. Five sub-definitions. So the main definition is to make unclean or impure. To defile is to make unclean or impure. As A, to corrupt the purity or perfection of. And the synonym is debase. We talked about debase. We also talked about defame recently, which is kind of similar. There's an example. The countryside defiled by billboards. Uh, yeah, I gotta say, I'm, a, I'm not a big fan of when there's those big old signs and you're look, trying to look at the beautiful countryside. 
You could use defiled in that context. B for defile. To violate the chastity of. And the synonym is deflower. Uh, yeah, we talked about chastity back in the seas. You know, it's when um, when you are chaste, when you have chastity, you have not um, partaken in the sexual arts. You could call it that. Um, but if you are violating that chastity, or maybe somebody is violating it to you, that's even worse. Uh, that would be deflower, which we will get to uh, in the near future. Um, but yes, defile, this is a very negative word, especially in this context. C, to make physically unclean, especially with something unpleasant or contaminating, as in boots defiled with blood. And typically you don't really want blood on your boots unless that is the style you're going for. Hopefully it's your own blood and you still have enough of it to live. Uh, maybe it's for a haunted house or a horror movie, and it's not real blood. But yeah, something unpleasant or contaminating. Contaminant. B. No, D. They're opposite. They're backwards. To violate the sanctity of, and the synonym is desecrate. As in, defile a sanctuary. And then E. The synonyms are sully and dishonor. The synonym for everything is the word contaminate. Contaminated, con contaminating a thing, defiling it, it's just making it, making it not what you want. That's basically what it is. Or maybe that's the style that you're going for. Defilement is a noun, and defiler is a noun. A defiler is defiling the things, and they are doing defilement? Okay, what does the etymology say? Let's see, from Old English, phylon, which is of defoilin, which means to trample or defile, from Anglo-French, defouler, which means to trample, Again, there's the trample, and then it's from de plus fuller or foller, which means to trample, or literally to full. To full, F-U-L-L, -L, how can you to full a thing? Hmm. So when a thing is full, it's, it's perfect. It's what it's, what it's supposed to be. But then if you defile, de full, you are making it the opposite of that. I guess. Blah, 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 blah. Next is the second form of defile. And you could also emphasize the first syllable, defile. This is a noun from 1685, and it is a narrow passage or gorge. That is a defile? This, this is a new one to me. The etymology is not helpful. It's just from French. But, uh, hmm, that's interesting. I wonder... I wonder, hmm, okay, if we look at the etymology from the last one, trampling full, so if there is not a narrow passage or gorge, then maybe that rock formation is full. But then there's a, something happens, an earthquake, it separates it, just normal plate tectonics are moving, it creates this gorge, or maybe it's a canyon, like the water is wearing away, and it creates a defile, it's not full anymore. That, that makes sense to me. Next word. The third form of defile. And you could also pronounce this one defile. This is an intransitive verb from 1705. To march off in a line. To march off in a line. Like they say, file up. So you, that means you're getting in line. And then you, if you march off in that line, you are defiling. Um, let's see, this is from French, défiler, which is dé plus filaire, which means to move in a column. Filer. Okay, I think we have one more word. Yes, one more word for this episode. It is the word definable. Can we define definable? It is an adjective from 1610. By the way, I should spell it because sometimes you can 
spell words like this a couple ways. D-E-F-I-N-A-B-L-E, definable. Number one, able to be defined. Can you define the thing? Can you explain it to me? It is, is it definable? Two, able to be specified to have a particular function or operation, as in definable keys. So your keyboard, you can choose the function or the operation for each of the individual keys, and uh, then they would be definable. Keyboard shortcuts. A lot of programs I use have keyboard shortcuts, so you can customize what you want. You can make them what you want. They are definable. Definably is an adverb. I don't even know how you would use that in a sentence. Definably? Hmm. I think there is going to be a word of the episode. It's going to be one of these words. Defiant. Defibrillator. Defibrinate. Deficiency. Deficiency disease. Deficient. Deficient. Deficit. Deficit spending. Defire. Defilade. Defile. 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 Definable. I think I have to pick defibrillator as the word of the episode. If I didn't spell it, I will because it can be a little hard to figure out. D-E-F-I-B-R-I-L-L-A-T-O-R. There's two L's. Two L's, one R. Well, there's two R's, but they're not next to each other. Anyway, defibrillator. This is a very important invention from... 60, 70 years ago, 70 years ago, and um, yeah, maybe we'll post a link about uh, the history of the defibrillator, and you can read up on it, and uh, maybe maybe you've had a defibrillator used on you. I don't think I have. I hope I never do, but a lot of people have, and it's, has, it's saved lives. It's very important. The defibrillator is very important. Thank you, defibrillator inventors. Okay, I think that's good. Um, let's see. Yesterday, this is this is personal Spencer time. Shut me off if you don't like it, because I, I talk mostly about movies. Uh, we watched the movie Pearl yesterday, which is the sequel prequel to the movie X, which came out earlier this year. And then there's going to be a third one, and I just think it's really cool that uh, Ty West and also Mia Goth they're making this like really cool independent artsy horror thing and uh yeah it's fun it's uh, different yeah that's what i got to say to you today this has been spencer dispensing information goodbye hello word nerds welcome to the dictionary the most amazing podcast for you to listen to today and every day for the rest of your lives i wonder how many minutes and hours and days of content this podcast will be when it's all done Hmm. Mm-hmm-hmm. I guess we'll figure that out later. Okay, so the first word in this first section of page 327 is the word define. D-E-F-I-N-E. This is going to be a semi-meta, a kind of meta episode for this podcast because, well, just for the dictionary in general, because we're we're talking about definitions and defining things and that's what i will be reading they are definitions it's it's gonna it's gonna hurt our brains in the best way possible okay define this is a verb from the 14th century let's define define uh it's uh yeah it's just transitive 1a no wait wait is it uh, usually when it says verb and then it says transitive, that means there's in. Intri- oh, there it is. I found it. It's at the very end. Okay, so starting with transitive 1A. To determine or identify the essential qualities or meaning of. Of just something. As in, whatever defines us as human. What does define us as human? Is it our big sexy brains we can think we can comprehend we can think about thinking we can think about the future we can have there are lots of things 
it, they're pretty much mental because physically physically you know there are there are things that define us as a human physically but you know we're very similar to other things in that way largely uh, yeah, to determine or identify the essential qualities. What are the essential qualities or meanings of a thing? Hmm. What makes you you? What makes me me? What defines me as Spencer? And who are you? What is your definition? 1B. To discover and set forth the meaning of. And the example of the thing that we are setting forth the meaning of is a word. To discover and set forth the meaning of a word. That's it. You, oh, what is the word? Oh, I have discovered its meaning, and I'm going to put forth that meaning into the world, and the whole act of doing that is defining. Let's define. Define with one C to create on a computer, as in define a window. Also as in define a procedure. And I don't really know why they use this word here, but basically it's you're, you're setting the parameters for a thing. The window is this big. The procedure does this. It does this and then that and then those things. And so you're, you're creating the program, the thing to make, to define what this is. The window, the procedure. 2A. To fix or mark the limits of. And the synonym is demarcate. As in rigidly defined property lines we have said to the world that the property lines are here they start here they end here and uh yep they have been defined on the ground to be to make distinct clear or detailed especially in outline as in the issues aren't too well defined they're not very well defined, so they have not been made distinct, clear, or detailed. But when you define it, then you have done all those things. Three, the synonyms are characterize and distinguish, as in, you define yourself by the choices you make. And that is a quote from Denison University Bull. But there's a period after bull, so it's short for something probably bullshit. No, probably not that. What would that be? Bull. I might have to look it up. But the quote is, you define yourself by the choices you make. And yes, that is true. Whatever choices you make in life, whether you're actually making the choices or whether they are predetermined, we're not going to get into that. Um, that. That defines you as a person and that every choice makes you more that thing. Does that make sense? I don't know. Okay, now we have intransitive to make a definition. That's it. Just to make a definition is to define. Definement is a noun. Definer is a noun. The writers of this book are definers because they created definitions for all of these words. Oh, and I got to do a sound effect. Um, I think we're just going to do... Beep, 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 beep. The next word is definiendum. Is that it? Definiendum. D E F I N I E N D U M. Noun from 1871. An expression that is being defined is definiendum. This is a Latin word, which totally makes sense when you think about it. Um, and it is something to be defined. It is the neutral of definiendus, which is a geron gerundive of definire, uh, which is, I'm sure, it's something about defining. So something to be defined is definiendum, and the, the normal definition is an expression that is being defined. And I want to know how this gets used in a sentence. Definiendum. Next word. Beep, boop, 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 boop. The next word is definiens. Definiens. There are some odd words in this episode. Definiens. D E F I N I E N S. Noun from 1838. 
an expression that defines. So this is clearly related to the last one, which is an expression that is being defined, and this is an expression that defines. And the synonym here is just definition. So a definition is a thing, it's an expression, it's a, it's a number of words that defines a thing, and then you can also use the word definiens. This must be the old, the old word. Um, the plural of this word is def, definientia, definientia. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. This book is filled with definien, <laughs> definientia. That is a good word. That is a good word. Def, definiens. Okay, we're, we'll get to the word definition later this episode, but we got we got to work our way there. The next word, beep, 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 boop. It is definite, or you can change it to just two syllables, definite, but I like definite. Whenever I write this word, I, I don't know why, when, but I was, I just write it definite, or definitely, that's the, that's another one where I, I have to think in my head, definitely, so I know how to spell it. Okay, definite, adjective from 1553. One, having distinct or certain limits, as in set definite standards for pupils to meet. These, the limits for their standards are very distinct. A lot of people have had discussions about what these limits and standards are. 2A, free from all ambiguity, ambiguity, uncertainty, or obscurity, as in demanded a definite answer. I prefer answers to be definite. I don't like wishy-washy answers. I want you to say, partly it's just my brain, how my brain works. I need very, I need specifics. I'm very literal. Uh, so yes, I like, I like definite things. Do this right now. Not like, hey, go do this, uh, this idea. No, do this, the step by step. I like that. No, there's no ambiguity. There's no uncertainty. There's no, it's not obscure. Please and thank you. To be, the synonyms are unquestionable and decided. As in, the quarterback was a definite hero today. There was no question about it. The quarterback, oh, I, they saved the day. They, they made all of the goals. They did it single-handedly. No, they probably didn't. It's a team effort. But for some reason, the quarterback, they were the MVP. The team, the, uh, the everybody, the whole stadium has decided. It's definite. Three, typically designating an identified or immediately identifiable person or thing, as in the definite article, and then it's the word the. The, the word the, is the, defi de the definite article. And the word the here is in italics. Uh, and I, yeah, I've, I've heard of it used to be described this way, but what does it say? Typically designating an identified or immediately identifiable person or thing. So when you put the word the in front of a thing, the dictionary, you are designating it as being very identified as the thing. This is the podcast where I am reading the dictionary. It's the only one that I'm doing. 4A is talking about floral organs, the florgans, and it means being constant in number, usually less than 20, and occurring in multiples of the petal number, as in stamens definite. I don't know why it's definite, why it's not definite stamens, but it's stamens definite. There's less than 20, um, there's multiple petal numbers. 4B, I think, is still talking about the florgans, and it's the synonym cymos, C-Y-M-O-S-E, as in a definite inflorescence. A synonym for everything is the word explicit. Yep, similar to what I was saying before, I like things to be explicit because my brain doesn't comprehend the implicit things nearly as well. Definitely is an adverb, 
and definiteness is a noun. We are definitely going to move on to the next one. It is definite integral. Two words, noun from 1834, and this is math, so get ready. The difference between the values of the integral of a given a given function, f, and then x in parentheses, for an upper value, b, and a lower value, a, of the independent variable x. So the function, it's it's like a um, it's like a uh, formula, but in this case, the function is just x, and the upper value is b, and the lower value is a, and I can't really describe it very much better than that. But it's the difference between, I guess it's the difference between a and b. So maybe x is the definite integral. Next word. B -b 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 -b. Definition. Noun from the 14th century. This podcast is just all definitions. So is this book. Number one. We have a bunch of definitions here. Number one. An act of determining, specifically the formal proclamation of a Roman Catholic dogma, is the definition 2a. A statement expressing the essential nature of something. Whatever the essential nature is of a, th of a thing, the statement that talks about that is the definition. 2b. A statement of the meaning of a word or word group or a sign or symbol. As in, dictionary definitions. So yes, these are all statements about the meaning of a, a word, a word group, a sign, or a symbol. We don't really see a lot of signs or symbols here, but some, there are words to, to, to be in place of a sign or a symbol. Um, and then yes, we have words or word groups. Sometimes they, we see two or three words together, like definite integral. That's two words. That's a word group. So this definition is a definition. To see a product of defining is a definition. Three, the action or process of defining. So when you are defining a thing, you are doing definition. 4a, the action or the power of describing, explaining, or making definite and clear, as in, the definition of a telescope. Also as in, her comic genius is, I lost my place, is beyond definition. You can't even describe it, explain it, or make it definite and clear. I feel like when I listen to this later, I'm going to say, oh, why didn't I just say this thing? There's all, there's so often when I listen to these later, I'm like, oh, my brain now, thinking back on this later, is thinking about something that I could have said, and I feel like there's something about the word def, I don't know, I don't know, some sort of joke, some, some comment, I don't know, but when I'm in it, when I'm in it, I just can't, my brain can't think of all the things that it wants to say. 4B, 1. Clarity of visual presentation. And then also distinctness of outline or detail, as in improve the definition of an image. We want the, the image to be clearer. We say enhance, and that doesn't work. But yes, you're making you're, the definition of an image, you're making it better. Hmm. 4B2. Clarity especially of musical sound in reproduction. Oh, so like this is, a, well, I mean, HD, high definition, but typically for sound, it's, uh, it's high fidelity. The fidelity of a thing is how clear it is. What's the definition? Yeah. Um, 4C, sharp demarcation of outlines or limits, as in a jacket with distinct weight definition. Yeah, that's when it's marking marking the outlines or the limits of a thing. Uh, what do we have before? There was the uh, out demarcation of the property lines. Um, yeah, the definitions. Uh, cl uh, clothes can make the definitions of your body 
what they are or look different. Definitional is an adjective. The etymology isn't really helpful, so we're going to move on. It is the word definitive, first form, adjective from the 14th century. One, serving to provide a final solution or to end a situation, as in a definitive victory. It wasn't even a question. It, the victory was definitive. Two, authoritative and apparently exhaustive, as in a definitive edition. So this could be a book, a movie, a thing. It's the last one. It's very authoritative and probably exhaustive. It's got all the things in it that you would possibly want. It's the definitive edition. 3A. Serving to define or specify precisely, as in definitive laws. They are very precise on what they talk about. 3B. Serving as a perfect example, and the synonym is quintessential. It is the quintessence of examples. Maybe this example is the definitive example for the word definitive. A definitive bourgeois. That person, that bourgeois person, is is just the perfect example of what a bourgeois person is. That's the quintessential bourgeois. Four. Fully differentiated or developed, as in a definitive organ. I hope all of your organs, maybe your florgans, I hope that they are definitive and uh, they're not causing you any problems. They are fully differentiated from all the other organs. They're developed, and they are perfect. Number five is talking about a postage stamp, and it is issued, the definition is issued as a regular stamp for the country or territory in which it was used, or which it is to be used. The definitive stamp for that territory. A synonym for all is the word conclusive. Definitively is an adverb, and definitiveness is a noun. And again, the etymology ain't telling me much. Next word is the second form of definitive, noun from 1951. A definitive postage stamp. Postage stamp. A definitive postage stamp. And compare to the word provisional, which I have to believe is the opposite. Uh, Provisional, it can be used for maybe other things, but a definitive postage stamp, I guess it's saying it can only be used for that area. I'm just going back to the previous definition. Issued as a regular stamp for the country or territory in which it is to be used. There is one more word group for this episode. Bloop, 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 bloop. It is definitive host. I am the definitive host for the podcast that talks about definitions. It's, it's just me. Sorry. Unless I die, I am the host. Noun from 1901. The host in which the sexual reproduction of a parasite takes place. And maybe I don't want to be the definitive host. I don't think I want the sexual reproduction of a parasite to take place on me. That's, that doesn't sound very fun. It says compare to the number one definition for the word intermediate host. So they are an inter, they're in the middle. Um, is it before the definitive host? Is it after the definitive host? I don't know. We'll wait until we get to the eyes. I mean, I guess if a parasite is going to do their sexual reproduction on me, then that's just the way it has to be. Okay, we have to reread the words we had. Define, definiendum, definiens, definite, definite integral, definition, definitive, definitive, and definitive host. Um, let's see. I mean, yes, I think that uh, definiens was a fun way to say the word definition. Um, 
I, I, I do think I'm going to have to just go with definition as the word of the episode because this that's what this book is all about. It's just the, it's defining the things, you know, define, that can be a runner-up. It's defining all of the things in the English language, practically all of them, all of the stuff in our lives are being defined here. They have definitions, and then I am here to talk about them to you because for some reason, this is what you want. You've asked for this. Okay, definition. I mean, I guess I could pick define. Uh, no, I feel like definition makes more sense, at least for this this show. Definition. It has a definition. Okay, that's fine. This is the end of the episode. Thank you very much for listening. And until next time, this is Spencer dispensing definitions goodbye hello word nerds welcome to another episode of the dictionary this is the podcast where i spencer am reading the dictionary still still and then you just make some comments and talk about it and it's so much fun and there should be more guests but there are guests coming maybe someday uh every single episode will have a guest i think that would be a fun dream My life just can't handle that right now. I can't handle it. The first word in this episode is definitize, or you could pronounce, you can, you can emphasize a couple different syllables. Definitize or definitize. Definitize. D-E-F-I-N-I-T-I-Z-E. Definitize? I think that's how my brain wants to say it. This is a transitive verb from 1876 to make definite. Definitely have made something definite to solidify it in existence. Definitize. Today, the sound effect will be... Next word is definitude or definitude. Tude. Definitude. Noun from 1836. The synonyms are precision and definiteness. Definiteness. There's, I don't think these really get used that much. Definitude, definiteness. Um, and then precision. You have to be very precise with something before you can call it, that. say that it has definitude. So, Next is deflagrate. Is that how you say it? Deflagrate. D-E-F-L-A-G-R-A-T-E. Deflagrate. Verb. From circa 1727, starting with transitive. And it is to cause to deflagrate. Making something deflagrate is deflagrate. And it says compare to the number one definition for detonate. So maybe exploding a thing is like deflagrate. Um, And then the intransitive, hopefully this is going to be more helpful than the transitive definition. To burn rapidly with intense heat and sparks being given off. All right. Yeah, that makes a whole lot more sense. We, We can visualize this. Something is burning quickly, it's very hot, and there are sparks specifically. So when you light a fuse, maybe you see this in movies and TV shows and cartoons, you light the thing and it sparks. I just recently rewatched the Bob's Burgers movie, and there is a... See, well, I'm not going to give any, way, any spoilers specifically, but, you know, there might, may or may not be some sort of uh, fuse bomb thing something. So, uh, yeah, there was there was some deflagrating happening there deflagration maybe that would have been the better word there's some deflagration that is a noun why well, you i would think there has to be some fun etymology for this word yes yes there is this is from the latin verb deflagrare which means to burn down and that is from day plus flagrare flagrare and that means to burn and there's more at the word black i mean 
when something is burned, it usually gets blackened. It's black. It's charred. So uh, that's that's kind of interesting. But yes, flagrare is to burn. De flagrare is to burn down. So deflagrate is basically basically burning something down. Next is deflate, deflate or deflate. This is a verb from 1891. This is not about burning things. This is something else. Uh, we are starting with transitive again, as we often do. Number one, to release air or gas from, and it might make the sound, as in the example, deflate a tire. Hopefully it's happening on purpose, but an accidental tire deflation is not any fun. I actually have that little, uh, that little picture, the little light on the dashboard that's saying something is weird with the air pressure in your tires, so you gotta go check it out, and I haven't done that yet, but they all look okay, so I think I might be okay. But you know what? There could be a nail in there, so I really should fix that. Hopefully it doesn't deflate. Two, to reduce in size, importance, or effectiveness, as in, deflate his ego with cutting remarks. It's very possible his ego needed a little bit of deflation. Cut, cut, you say some mean things about somebody who's got a big ego, just bring it down to size. Psst. Number three, to reduce or cause to contract. And the examples, there are some examples. I'll read it all together. To reduce a price level or cause a volume of credit to contract. So something something with money, you're dealing with money, reducing the price of a thing or changing the level of credit that you have maybe on your credit card. You're contracting all of this. You're, it's a deflation. Deflate the prices. And now we have intransitive, which is just to lose firmness through or as if through the escape of contained gas. So when I fart, my body loses firmness because there is gas escaping. It's my body is deflating. There is a synonym for everything. It is the word contract. Yes, it's you're it's it's getting smaller. It's contracting, not not expanding. Deflator, spelled with an O-R or an E-R, that is a noun. The one who is making the deflating happen. Next word. It is deflation. Noun from 1891. Uh, yes, this is the same year as deflate. That's good. That's good to see. I'm very happy about that. Number one, an act or instance of deflating. Also, the state of being deflated is deflation. That sad balloon laying on the ground is in a state of deflation because it has been deflated. Number two, a contraction in the volume of available money or credit that results in a general decline in prices. Yes, yeah, this is what we saw before. It's all the monies, monies are being contracted. Number three, the erosion of soil by the wind. Hmm, very, that's very specific. The wind blows along the rocks. They slowly, slowly get eroded away, and it's called deflation. I don't know if I've heard that one before. That's kind of interesting. Deflationary is an adjective. Next word is deflect and you can say the first syllable de or d deflect deflect this is a verb from circa 1555 starting with transitive to turn aside especially from a straight course or fixed direction to turn aside especially so if the thing's going straight in one direction and then it comes up against the thing it uh, will get deflected into another direction. Intransitive says to turn aside. That's all it is. 
but then the synonym is deviate. So it's taking another course of action. This could be literally something um, like, a, like a, a billiard ball, a pool ball that's bouncing on the walls, or uh, just the course of something, the course of your life. Uh, anything, is, it's, it's being deviated. Deflection, no, deflectable is an adjective. If it is able to be deflected, it's deflectable. Deflective is an adjective. Um, what, what word is this reminding me of? Deflective, uh, defective. It's, uh, that's just one, one letter apart, isn't it? Defective. Uh, so something deflective, defective. Yeah. Deflector is a noun. It doesn't reflect any of the light. This is from the Latin deflectere, deflectere, and that means to bend down or turn aside. And that is from de plus flectere, which means to bend. Bending in all directions. Next is deflection. Noun from 1605, one. A turning aside or off course. And the synonym is deviation. Oh no, what happened? We have deviated from the standard course. We are now off course. Number two, the departure of an indicator or pointer from the zero reading on the scale of an instrument. Okay, so we got an instrument and it has a zero reading. It's probably its, it's base, base level, but this is the departure of an indicator or pointer from the zero reading. And I, I think I need more context of what kind of instrument we're talking about. I mean, if you're driving in a car and you go from zero, like this, your speedometer, if it goes from zero, is that a deflection? I don't think so. There must be something else. <sighs> Next is deflexed or deflexed. D-E-F-L-E-X-E-D deflexed which which what context would you say deflexed maybe if you're not flexing your muscles you would be deflexed and then you can there's also deflexed adjective from 1826 and this one is just turned abruptly downward as in a deflexed leaf the leaf it's when it's when it's reaching up for the sun, it is flexed, I guess. But when it's not, it's just hanging there limp. It is deflexed. That's it for that one. Uh, okay, well, let's do a sound effect. Pew! The next two words are more in the adult world. Uh, I feel like I am not the best person to talk about this, so we probably won't talk about it a whole lot, but we will have to talk about it a little bit. The first of these two words is defloration. And uh, because of the of the Asian on there, you, you pronounce it a little bit weird, but this will make more sense momentarily. Defloration, or you could say uh, defloration, which makes a little bit more sense when you know what the word is, defloration. Noun from the 15th century, all the way back then, uh, this in the, the, the definition is just rupture of the hymen. And the etymology, there's not really anything, but maybe the next word will give us more. Oh, wow, there's, there's a, lot, a lot in there. All right. Well, anyway, uh, rupture of the hymen, real quick b biology talk. Um, a woman's body. Uh, one who was, I guess, you, I would have to say one who was born a female. We're not going to get into anything more complicated than that. We're just, we're just working with generalizations here. Uh, somebody born with a vagina. Let's put it that way. Somebody born with a vagina. There is some, some skin on the inside and typically during intercourse, but not necessarily that piece of very thin skin uh, often is uh, broken. It's ruptured. Um, and, uh, so a lot of people will say our next word, which is just deflower. So when that happens, they have been deflowered. And, uh, this is a very nice way to say lost their virginity, I guess. 
and you know th this th we could talk about this for a very long time there's a lot of a lot of things a lot of emotions behind all this physical and emotional and so much we're not going to get too far into that but basically that's what it is uh, so let's talk about the next word it is deflower like i said this is a transitive verb from the 14th century so this one came before defloration, which makes sense. Um, and there's two definitions. Number one, to deprive of virginity. And that is an interesting way to word that. To deprive of virginity. Um, interesting. Before, before this happens, somebody is a virgin. And then when this happens, when they have sex or there could be other things that make this physically happen... Um, you have deprived them of their virginity. And I just, I don't know, I find it very interesting to use that word. I feel like the word deprive has some, maybe not negative connotations, but more the feeling of you're taking, I guess it's taking something away. But in addition to that, what I think of in my mind of like, you're taking away something that they really enjoy. Like if you were to take away my pizza you would be depriving me of pizza because I like pizza and I'm going to have some for dinner tonight. But, the, yeah, so when you combine it with the word virginity, I find that very interesting. But maybe I'm putting a little bit too much, too, too many meanings behind the word deprive. Anyway, number two. To take away the prime beauty of. And this, again, is very interesting that they would word it this way and i don't know maybe i'm just i i don't know i don't know i don't know what to say about that okay to take away the prime beauty of so are you are you trying to say that the virginity of somebody is their prime beauty is that what you are saying i i have a bit of an issue with that um hmm okay Deflowerer is a hard word to say, and that is a noun. Deflowerer. So I guess that's the one who is doing the deflowering of the person who has been deflowered. Uh, hmm. I guess. The etymology. This is from the Latin, the the lower Latin deflorare. Hmm. This I okay. And uh, which is from the Latin de plus flor or flor or flos. Flor or flos, which means flower. So, okay, so yes. Um, before we get to the next part, we'll just say that um, I guess, I guess the idea of this is, well, there's, I'm sure the word flower has a lot of meanings in this context uh, or possibly a lot of meanings. Uh, you know, that you look at um, Georgia O'Keeffe paintings and... There, because because there's actually some flowers in front of me. How how odd. Um, there there are a lot of artists. A lot of people will look at the vagina, and or, or the and and everything around there, and they say it looks like a flower, or will interpret that visually as a flower. So I think that's one one way to talk about that. But also, if you look at this number two definition, to take away the prime beauty of. You know, flowers are very beautiful, so I guess that's part of that. Anyway, it, it's a, it's a, it's just a word that we're so used to hearing now. I think in a lot of ways, but then the etymology says there's more at the word blow, and I just don't know how to comprehend that part. I think that's interesting. We have to move on. The next word is defog. Or defog, fog, I think is the pronunciation. Defog, defog. This is a transitive verb from 1904. To remove fog or condensed moisture from. I guess some people just with their accent, they say fog. Like, like Boston, I, I could hear a Boston person saying defog, but I would say defog. So you're removing the fog or the condensed moisture from, and the example is defog a windshield. And uh, I'm, I'm currently in the early stages of fall here in Chicago, and so this is definitely something I think I'm going to be 
needing to use a lot and then winter i mean really most mostly i think the colder times because of all the condensation it's cold outside but you get in the car and it's all warm and then there's condensed moisture and it's kind of it can be a pain but you got to understand how all the dials work in your car so you know how to defog it properly defogger is a noun thank you to the defoggers i can't even imagine what cars were like before there were defoggers Next is defoliant. Noun from 1943, a chemical spray or dust applied to plants in order to cause the leaves to drop off prematurely. Why would you want this to happen? I don't know. I don't know my flowers and my plants, but I guess maybe in some context is contexts, you want the leaves to drop off prematurely and you would use a defoliant fascinating next maybe this is related defoliate transitive verb from 1791 to deprive of leaves especially prematurely Mm -hmm. why you want to do this i'm not sure defoliation is a noun and defoliator is a noun And is the etymology interesting? This is from the Latin verb defoliare, which is from de plus folium. And folium means leaf. So yes, it's you're getting rid of the leaves. That's that's what it is. Defoliate. Next word. It is deforce. It's the word force, like the force from Star Wars, but but there's no no force, deforce. This is a transitive verb from the 15th century. Number one, to keep as lands by force from the rightful owner. To keep the lands by force. So you're take the person is living on this land or they own this land, and then other somebody else comes. They are the def- deforcer. And they take the land by force. I think that is what it's saying. To keep by force from the rightful owner. Uh, yeah, this is not, not a great word. Not a great word. Deforce. It's kind of a weird word. Number two. To eject a person from possession by source. By, by force, not source. By force. To eject from possession by force. So somebody owns a thing, they they possess a thing, and then you are taking them away from that thing in a forceful manner. Deforcement is a noun. And I guess there are times when this might have to happen, but largely, um, you're, you're probably in the wrong if you're deforcing, deforcing somebody. Next word and last word. Pew. Deforestation. D-E-F-O-R-E-S-T-A-T-I-O-N. Deforestation or deforestation if you say forest instead of forest like a normal human being. Noun from 1874. The action or process of clearing all Uh, clearing of forests and then also the state of having been cleared of forests is deforestation deforest is a transitive verb that is the action of removing forests clearing the trees cutting them down getting rid of all that stuff and i think it is pretty safe to say that we are seeing a whole lot of this all over the world and we would really like to see a whole lot less of this all over the world maybe maybe no deforestation would be amazing can we ever get to that point um a lot of the forests are being cleared because people will put in uh they'll they'll either put in uh, places for cattle to live or they'll put in fields of food to grow for cattle and so then the cattle is used for meat and dairy but really we need the forests we don't need the cattle in the stuff uh, so, uh, yeah, you know, I, I, I would like to think that there has been a slowing of deforestation 
over the last 10 or 20 years. I don't know if that's actually true. Maybe I'll find a link that talks about deforestation in general. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I just feel like things should be just grown up naturally and just let it do its thing. Um, humans, humans, we're coming in and we're messing things up. We're messing things up. Um, okay, I guess I have to pick a word of the episode. So what did we have today? Definitize, definitude, or definitude, deflagrate, uh, that's the burning, deflagrate, deflate, deflation, deflect, deflection, deflexed, defloration, or defloration, deflower, defog, defoliant, defoliate, deforce, and deforestation. I feel like I have to pick deforestation as the word of the episode because this is just something that we just have to talk more about and, uh, you know, talk talk to talk to whoever you can. Talk to your, your city representatives, your state representatives, uh, and see what they can do politically to make bills, do change the laws all over the world. You know, this is not just America. All over the world this is happening. Uh, companies are going to other countries to deforest in Brazil, I think is a big one. We're losing the Amazon. So let's not do that, please. Let us not. Oh, I don't know. I don't know how to sing a song about this. Deforestation is really bad for the climate, baby. I don't know why I had baby to the end of that. It is what happened. So you have to deal with it and love it so much. All right. Yeah. Deforestation. Let's not do it. This has been Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to this episode of the Dictionary. Yay! Uh, we're just going to get right into it. I don't have things, special things to say today. Just uh, come back here every day and listen, and I think that would be great. Thank you. I appreciate that. The first word in this episode is deform or deform. D E F O R M. Verb from the 15th century starting with transitive one. To spoil the form of. The form of a thing has been spoiled, so it is deformed. Number two, A. To spoil the looks of. And the synonym is disfigure. That's probably talking about a person, a face, disfigure, a face, and it looked one, one way and you have spoiled it. But, you know, maybe you like the way that the deformed look looks. Yeah. As in the example, a face deformed by bitterness. How does bitterness deform your face? Well... If you are tasting something bitter and you don't like it, like how I don't care for the bitterness of coffee or really, really dark chocolate, uh, then my face might mm, make a make a face. It might go, ooh, I don't like that flavor. Uh, this is why sometimes I kind of wish this was a, a video and then you could see it, maybe live stream someday. I don't, bit, bit, yeah, bit, bitter, bitter stuff will disfigure my face and it, then my face will be spoiled. The beautiful looks of my face have been spoiled. Number two B. To mar the character of. As in, a marriage deformed by jealousy. So this is not physically deforming th a thing. This is, this is the idea of marriage. Somebody was jealous of the other one. And then the character of the marriage has been deformed. It's, it's all been marred, and it's sad. Number three, to alter the shape of by stress. Oh, yes. Stress can do a lot. It will really, really mess with your body. I don't know what shape is being altered, but something. Intransitive says to become misshapen or changed in shape. Just the shape has been messed up. Deformable is an adjective. And now it's time to read the synonyms of the word deform. Deform, distort, contort, and warp. 
deform, distort, contort, and warp. They all mean to mar or spoil by or as if by twisting. Twisting specifically? All right. I, I don't know if I disagree with that one, but this is what you say. Deform may imply a change of shape through stress, injury, or accident of growth. As in, a face deformed by hatred. I guess your face can be deformed by hatred. Your your eyebrows might go down. Your your mouth might get all. Oh, I'm so. I have so much hatred. Distort and contort both imply a wrenching from the natural or normal, but contort suggests a more involved twisting and a more grotesque and painful result, as in. The odd camera angle distorts the figure. Also as in, disease had contorted her body. Hmm. So, there was a natural state, and it has been wrenched around, so distort and contort are the same thing, but contort, uh, more twisting for that one, and often more, more painful and grotesque looking. Hmm, that, that's interesting. Um, and then warp indicates an uneven shrinking that bends or twists out of a flat plane, as in warped floorboards. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's bad. They have been deformed, but more specifically, you know, they're supposed to be flat, and then now they're more three-dimensional, which they're not supposed to be. Okay. Is there any etymology that we would like to talk about? Um, it's just from the Latin de, de formare, which is from formare, which means to form. Yeah, it, it's pretty obvious, I think. The next word. E? Deformalize. Deformalize. Transitive verb from 1880. And it's just to make less formal. This podcast used to be very formal, and I have deformalized it, so we're not so formal, and it's very casual, just the way I like things. I hope you appreciate that. Yeah, uh, let's see, deformalize. Hmm, you know, I, the first thing I can think of usually when something is formal is like a like a black tie party. You got to get all dressed up. But if you say, no, actually, we would, don't want it to be so formal, we're going to deformalize. Maybe after the party, you can get in your comfy clothes and you have deformalized yourself. Deformation, or just deformation, that is the next word. Noun from the 15th century, one. Alteration of form or shape. Also, the product of such alteration. Such alteration. We, we talked so much about the word deform. The, the act of something being deformed is, the, is deformation or deformation. Um, number two, the action of deforming and also the state of being deformed is deformation or deformation. Three, change for the worse is deformation. And, uh, you know, that's... I, I mean, I guess, yes, there's there's some negative connotations with the word deform. Um, you're, you're changing the form, but it's it, it has this idea of not as good as it was before. So, but, you know, you can, I think you can still deform something and make it better, maybe. Deformational is an adjective. E Oh, that's got to be the worst sound effect. Maybe I shouldn't have done that one. That's the sound effect. The next word is deformative or deformative. Adjective from 1641. Tending to deform is deformative. If something just tends to deform, what, what would that be? Hmm. The next word. 
E. Make it less irritating for your ears. Deformed with an ED. Adjective from the 15th century. Distorted or unshapely in form. And the synonym is misshapen. I, I like things that are deformed. I don't know. I just, I just, I just like it. Not everything needs to be so perfect and pretty. Next word, e, deformity. Noun from the fifteenth century. Number one, the state of being deformed. You are in a, in a, in a state of deformity. Uh, <laughs> there are some uh, TikTok videos that I've done for this. You can go see them at Speedjampar. Uh, it's all dictionary stuff at the moment. But uh, yeah, there there have been some some effects that I put on my face that makes them very deformed. One one recently, uh, I think, I don't know, but just like within the last week, my face got very deformed and it was beautiful. Number two, the synonyms are imperfection and blemish as to a, a physical blemish or distortion. Uh, and the synonym there is disfigurement. You, so I, I don't know. I don't know what to say about this. I, you know, I think that there are uh, a lot of people, especially back in the day, there would be, you know, you'd call it a disfigurement. I feel like there's a lot of negative connotations behind that. But it's, you know, it's a, it's a physical thing on the body, on the face, and the arms, whatever it is, that's maybe different than the norm. And, uh, you know, it affects people greatly. I, I think most people have a hard time. Oh, I don't want to be seen in public or oh, I want to get it removed. And uh, I totally understand that. Um, you know, back in the day, they would be put in a, in a, in a carnival, in a freak show, whatever. Um, but I think, I think these days, well, first of all, these days with medical things that we have, it's a lot easier to get them quote unquote fixed. Uh, you know, I don't, I, I, that's, there's definitely meaning behind that word fixed, but, um, you know, to get them, whatever. But also, uh, there's also people who choose to have disfigurements or blemishes or distortions or deformities, uh, by, by plastic surgery, uh, different kinds of surgery. Um, and, uh, I don't know whether it's, uh, just the, just the way that you were born or on purpose. I just, I find those things fascinating. I've always loved those things. Um, and, uh, yeah, I don't know. Embrace it, I guess, if you want to. I, I think, uh, if you can be, be proud of who you are and what you look like. And, uh, but I also get how hard that is because there are so many people who are not cool with those things. You know, you look at the movie Elephant Man and everybody just make fun of him or, you know, oh, it's just so sad. It is so sad. Um, yeah, that's tough. That's tough. Um, okay, to be a moral or aesthetic flaw or defect. Moral, a moral deformity. What would that be? Um, the etymology, we don't need to talk about that. Okay, no more deform words. Um, I don't really know. I think I've said all the things that I can probably say about that. Yeah. The next word. E. Defrag. D-E-F-R-A-G. Transitive verb from 1988. And the synonym is defragment. Um, yeah, I guess we'll just talk about that then. E defragment. This is a transitive verb from 1983. So 1983 was defragment, and then five years later, they could not say the whole word. They would just say defrag. This is to reorganize separated fragments of related data on a computer disk into a contiguous arrangement. So I, I think there are still computers that do this or you have to do this on, but uh, basically as you're using a computer, there's just bits and pieces of information spread all throughout the hard drive and it just sort of puts them wherever it can. 
I, I, this is a simple definition, a, a simple explanation, but I think it's, it's pretty close. So it stores information here and over there and all the other places, but, you know, a lot of the pieces are, are very similar, and so there is a process that you can run on the computer to, to defrag it. You're de, doing the defragmenting, um, and it basically takes all those, what are they called? They, they just called them, they're, they're fragments, fragments of, of pieces, uh, fragments of information, and it pulls all of the things that are alike and puts them in one place, so it only has one place to go to access those things. And basically what it does is it makes it run smoother and happier. Right? Did I get that right? You're, you're, you're defragmenting it. You're getting rid of all the fragments and putting them into full pieces of information. What's the opposite of a fragment? What would the word be? I don't know. But yeah, defrag the hard drive. Oh, I have to put in a clip of Weird Al's song uh, where he mentions defragging a hard drive. Yeah, be in the bills with my mad programming skills. Yeah, defragging yeah, my hard drive yeah, for thrills. Yeah. Defragmentation is a noun. And man, my eyes today have been really causing me some stress. And I don't know if it's all the screens I look at or the coffee or the age or what, but who, well, this is frustrating. All right, we're, we're getting there. The next word, e defragmenter defragmenter noun from 1986 software that defragments a computer disk you need something to defrag the computer so you need a defragmenter to defrag next word e defraud transitive verb from the 14th century and this is to deprive of something by deception or fraud. So if you go to a person and you decept them, is that even a word? If you decept them, if you do deception on them, you cheat them out of something, oh, the synonym is cheat, uh, then you are defrauding them. You have done fraud on this person or party and you are a defrauder, which is a noun. Uh, yeah, it's from defraudere. What? This is a Latin word. Defraudere. From, how do you say this? Defraudare. That's probably it. Which is de plus fraudare, which means to cheat. So, yeah. Uh, and then fraud or fraus is fraud. So that's where we get these words from. You're cheating. Now, defraud... But then you're, what's, I can't wait to get to the frauds, the fraud section. Next word. E it was supposed to be originally like a door creak. And then I was like, no, we're not doing that anymore. E. Defray is the next word. D-E-F-R-A-Y. Transitive verb from 1536. Number one. To provide for the payment of. And the synonym is pay. P-A-Y. To provide for the payment of is defray. I don't think I've heard this. Number two is archaic, so it's going to be even... It's going to make less sense. To bear the expenses of. Defrayable is an adjective. And defrayal, with an A-L at the end, that is a noun... And the etymology might help. This is from the Middle French defroyer, defroyer, which is from de plus frayer, which means to expend. Also from Old French. Uh, let's see, fret or fray. How, do you, how would you pronounce that? Maybe F-R-A-I-T is pronounced fray. That is expenditure or literally Damage by breaking. Damage by breaking. Also from the Latin fractum or fractus, which is from the verb frangere, which means to break. And there's more at the word break. So this is all about breaking. How? How that works exactly, I'm not so sure. How it deals with pain? 
or expenses. This one is very confusing. I would like some context of how you use this in a sentence. The next word. E Defriend. Transitive verb from 2004. The synonym is unfriend. And this must have come from Facebook. Uh, I'm trying to think. Did we? Yes, I believe Facebook had was was big enough in 2004, so that's where this came from. I think 2004 is the last year that I have seen in this book, and um, what well, that makes sense. So I was doing a little bit of research, and it looks like every year they add at least a hundred, if not hundreds, of words to these dictionaries, and they don't print them up all the time. So I'm feeling like I really, really, really need to do something different because there are so many words that have been added since 2004. A lot of words. And I don't know if I can go back through A, B, C to do that or even D. So I'm going to have to figure that out. Maybe before we get to E, we'll do that. But I was looking. They just added a bunch of words uh, this was early September 2022. They added a bunch of words to the dictionaries. You know, real modern things. So, yeah, we if we want to stay up on this, we might we might need to do that. We, as in me, I will not defriend you unless you become an asshole. Be cool, and we'll be cool. I'll be your friend. Next word, e, defrock. F-R-O-C-K. Transitive verb from 1581. 1. To deprive, as a priest, of the right to exercise the functions of office. So if you are saying that this priest is not allowed to do their job anymore, you have defrocked them. Number 2. To remove from a position of honor or privilege. And, you know, we don't know what the word frock means and why is it a position of honor or privilege, their job. Uh, You'll just have to wait until we get there because hopefully they will describe it more. We have one more word for this episode. E, 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 E. Defrost. D-E-F-R-O-S-T. This is a verb from 1895, starting with transitive number one, to release from a frozen state. I release you from your frozen state. You are not frozen anymore. In the movie The Thing, they defrosted the thing. As in the example, defrost meat. Lots of things. Anything that's frozen and it can't be cooked from a frozen state, you got to defrost it first. That could be Pulling it out the night before into the fridge, onto the counter, put it in the oven, maybe put it in the microwave. Lots of ways to defrost things. Uh, There's more. Number two, to free from ice, as in defrost the refrigerator. And then also the synonym defog, which uh, that was in yesterday's episode. Yeah, if you're in the car defog and defrost are are used semi-interchangeably because they're kind of getting rid of the same thing, using the similar process, I think. Now we have intransitive, to thaw out especially from a deep, frozen state. Maybe something is just frozen in a big old block of ice, and you got to defrost them. (laughs) Them? Who's them? Who? What person? Has been has been put in a big block of ice. I think uh, Austin Powers was kind of in a they they defrosted him. Defroster is a noun. Okay, I think I think we can uh, now reread the words and then we will pick a word of the episode. All my songs are the same. I gotta th- come up with something else. I don't know. I think I need I need I need a, a fix to this whole thing. Deform deformalize, deformation, deformative, deformed, deformity, defrag, defragment, defragmenter, defraud, defray, defriend, defrock, and defrost. Hmm, this one's hard. 
I don't know. Nothing really jumped out at me necessarily. I don't know. Maybe maybe one of these deform words. Um, for me, you know, there's so many things that can be deformed. But of course, the first thing I think of is some person with a physical deformity, a quote unquote deformity, um, because they don't look the same. And I just want to embrace them. Uh, I, I feel bad, I guess, that they have it in the first place. But I really, really just want them to be cool with it because I know a lot of people aren't. And uh, if you can get to a place of acceptance about this thing that you have, um, and, you know, this is this is coming from a, a person who technically has no deformities. I mean, I don't know. My feet are kind of small, but that's that wouldn't be considered a deformity. So I'm very lucky that I don't have something like this. But... Um, but I, I, I love the I love the people who are who are different and unique, physically, emotionally, mentally. They're they're the best. Um, okay, so deform which what what which one are we picking? Deformity? Yeah. Let's pick deformity. We gotta give the deformities the love. Love your deformity. I wish I had <laughs> what did we just watch? Uh this very odd movie called murder by death and one of the things they said that <laughs> this person has no pinkies and they're like what they only have eight fingers no they still have 10 fingers but they have no pinkies uh and i i just thought that was funny and uh that would be a deformity or having a sixth finger like the six fingered man in the princess bride that would technically be considered a deformity love your deformities this is the end of the episode. Aren't you so glad we finished it? How how, and why did you put yourself through this? Thank you very much for listening. And until next time, this is Spencer dispensing information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to another episode of the dictionary. Um, okay, so we've got to say the things. Instagram and Twitter. If you want to follow my show, this podcast on those platforms, uh, you can go search at dictionary pod and then you can see some things that i post it's pretty much once a day um email is dictionarypod at gmail.com write an email say hi what's going on google voice number call it leave a message i will listen to it if you want me to put it in an episode you can say that and maybe i will and if you don't want me to put it in an episode then say that and i won't maybe 917-727- 5757 if you like to do the old school phone number thing. Uh, please go rate and review this. This really helps the algorithms and the things so more people can learn about this show because I think more people need to learn about this show. Write a review. Put in the stars that you like. Yeah, do that. Um, YouTube, Apple, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, all the places it should be there. If you like, st if you still like Facebook, you can go find it there too. All right, let's talk about the words for this last section of page three hundred and twenty-seven. The first word is deft. D e f t. Adjective from the fifteenth century, characterized by facility and skill. A synonym is the word dexterous. You could probably pronounce that a few ways, but we'll learn about that when we get to the D-E-X section. So yeah, characterized by facility and skill. If you have the skills to make you have the facilities to know how to do a thing, you are deft. Maybe you can do a thing deftly, which is an adverb, and you have deftness, which is a noun, which is very similar to daftness. But that's very different. Okay. The, oh, interesting though. Uh, the, the etymology, Middle English, deft with an E at the end. And that means gentle, which is not really, doesn't make any sense to me. But it does say that there is more at the word daft. Hmm. So if you want to hear what I said about that, then just go back to that. Okay. Uh, we got to do a sound effect. The next word is defunct or just defunct. Adjective from 1599, 
no longer living, existing, or functioning, as in, that firm is now defunct. A synonym is the word dead. No more. It is has ceased to be. Uh, this is from the Latin verb, hmm, defungi. I don't think I've seen a Latin verb spelled, you know, with those letters, defungi. That means to finish. So it's something that is finished or or die, to die. Uh, that is from de plus fungi. I guess that's how you pronounce it. Fungi? Fungi? And that means to perform. Fungi is to perform and de fungi is to finish or die. So no more performing for that thing. There's more at the word function. So yes, if the thing is functioning, this is the opposite of that. No more functioning. The next word is defund. Defund. Transitive verb from 1948. It is to withdraw funding from. So something that gets funding now gets less funding. And this, we just briefly have to say that this has been a big topic of debate over the last year or two, well, two, really. Um, you know, the whole, the whole idea of defunding the police. And there are cities around the country that are, I think, experimenting with this in some way. Uh, I don't know, maybe I can find a link in the show note, uh, to put in the show notes that gives some more information about co- kind of where we are at this point with that. Um, but yeah, basically, uh, the idea, if I understand it correctly, the idea is let's give the police less money, still going to get paid, but the, uh, the, uh, the amount of money that we take away, what we're going to do is invest it into other things so the police don't don't have to do those things like uh, trained therapists, uh, psychologists, people like that who can come deal with mental health situations because the police aren't trained to do that. So it makes more sense for somebody who is trained to deal with those situations. So the police won't have to be bothered by that. So, you know, really the, the financial thing should should be a wash. Also, I think there's a lot of talk about investing the money that uh, would be taken away from the police and investing it into things to, I don't know, maybe help people in certain communities uh, not need to resort to violence or criminality things in the first place, Uh, like stealing, for instance. Um, Also, invest in the children, invest in the young people to get them off the streets, to get them educated, all those things. Uh, th- those I think are good things to do um, if the if the police are going to get defunded. And we, we have seen that the police have done some things that uh, they should not have done in years, many, many years, and, uh, and have been put into situations that they probably shouldn't have been put into in the first place. It's a really, really big topic of conversation. The next word is diffuse transitive verb from 1943 one to remove the fuse from and from what from a mine or a bomb removing the fuse from yeah that's good because then it won't blow up two to make less harmful potent or tense as in diffuse the crisis this is metaphorically removing the fuse of a possibly very bad explosive situation let's 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 let, let's make everything chill the next word is defy d-e-f-y first form verb from the 14th century and i think it is only transitive that makes sense number one is archaic To challenge, to combat. Challenging somebody to combat is to defy. But it is archaic, so that's why you have never heard this before. Two. To challenge, to do something considered impossible. And the synonym is dare. I dare you to do this thing that is very impossible, which is juggling three pins 
on fire while unicycling on something else on fire. To challenge to do something considered impossible. I don't think you can do this. I defy you. I defy you to do that thing. Three, to confront with assured power of resistance. And the synonym is disregard. Uh, as in, defy public opinion. I think that I defy public opinion by keep on doing this podcast. I resist you. Four, to resist attempts at, and the synonym is withstand, as in, the paintings defy classification. Wow, they must be really interesting and weird. I want to see these paintings. There's no... They have attempted to classify these paintings, but the paintings resist all attempts of classification. This is a Middle English word, which means to renounce faith in or challenge from the Anglo-French de fier, which is from de plus fier, which means to entrust from the Latin fidere, which means to trust, and there is more at the word bide, B-I-D-E. Trust, hmm, trust and intrust and faith. So, hmm, that's interesting. Okay, moving on. Beep, 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 boop, 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 bleh. The second form of defy is a noun from 1580. The synonyms are challenge and defiance. So that when you defy the thing that you are doing, your your defying is called a defy. Defy, defy. Next word. Deg, D-E-G. Uh, this is an abbreviation, so I don't know if anybody says it out loud, but it is an abbreviation for the word degree. Degree. The temperature, a circle, other things in degrees. The next word is degage. I think that is how you say it. Degage. D-E-G-A-G-E. Both of the E's have an accent that go boop. Adjective from 1696. One, free of constraint. And the synonym is nonchalant. When I think of constraint, I think of maybe something is constrained, like my maybe I'm stuck in a sleeping bag, free of constraint, but then I get out of the sleeping bag and I am dégagé. But I don't think of nonchalant. But maybe it's more personality-wise. If you're nonchalant, you're like, oh, I don't have any constraints. I'm, I'm feeling all good. Two, being free and easy, as in clothes with a dégagé look. Uh, hmm, being free and easy. I, I think a, you know, a very flowy skirt or loose-fitting clothes, those might be dégagé. Or you just, you just don't care what you look like, which is more like me. Three, extended with toe pointed in preparation for a ballet step. So I get, yeah, the ballet uses a lot of French terms. So uh, this, this must be one that they use there. Dégagé. I wonder why. Let's look at the etymology. Uh, okay, it is French from the verb dégager, which means to put at ease. Mm, from Old French, desgager which means to redeem a pledge or free, which is from de plus gage, maybe, gage, which means pledge, and there's more at the word gauge, G-A-G-E, gauge, or jage, jage, gauge. So I guess when with the ballet thing, are you being, are you putting your foot, your toe at ease? Doesn't really seem like it, but uh, maybe if you're, you're easy and free and easy, and uh, then then you can be dégagé. Let's all be dégagé. Next word is degas. D e g a s, transitive verb from 1928, to remove gas from, as in degas 
an electron tube. There are lots of things that can be degassed. Next word. Beep, beep, boop, 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 beep, 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 boop. It is degolism. Degolism. Two words. First word is D-E. Second word, capital G-A-U-L-L-I-S-M. Degolism. Noun from 1943. The synonym is just golism. No D-E. So that's kind of interesting. I think de Gaulle, is this an artist? Uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll learn when we get to the G's. Uh, and de Gaullist is a noun. So yeah, I think this must, I, I suspect this is uh, related to art. Next word. Boop, beep, beep. Boop, boop, beep, beep, beep. De Goss. De Goss. D-E-G-A-U-S-S. Transitive verb from circa 1940. To remove or neutralize the magnetic field of. How do you do that? I don't know. Uh, as in the examples. Degoss a ship or degoss a magnetic tape. And then degosser is a noun. Well, I really don't know how you can remove or neutralize the magnetic field of a thing, but D Carl F. Goss probably figured it out because this is named after Carl. Uh, maybe we'll put a link in the show notes so you can learn about degaussing and removing the magnetic field from something. Next word. Degenderize is next. Transitive verb from 1987. To eliminate any reference to a specific gender in. And the examples of what it is in is a word, text, or act. So if a word, let's see, uh, okay, a word in not so much in English, but in other languages, they are often genderized. Like there's the male version and female version, masculine, feminine in like Spanish. Uh, the masculine ones usually end in O, and the feminine ones usually end in A. Um, and so what are the examples, other examples, texts, or an act? An act of what? An act, a physical act, a human being doing an act? Mm, so a text, maybe it's a sentence, maybe it's a paragraph, something like that. And so if you take out any reference to gender, male, female, whatever, then you would be de-genderizing and... Uh, I wonder, I wonder what the example was. When, when was this first used in 1987? Not that long ago. Um, hmm. And, you know, this, th lots of things um, are, are being degenderized these days because the idea of gender has completely changed uh, from what a lot of us were used to before. And there's, there's no need for lots of things to be genderized. So, yeah, that's, I think it's great to degenderize a lot of things. Next word. Degeneracy. Degeneracy? Degeneracy or degeneracy. Yeah. D-E-G-E-N-E-R-A-C-Y. Noun from 1664. One. The state of being degenerate. Degeneracy is the state of being degenerate. What is degenerate? You are going to have to wait just a couple of minutes, maybe not even that much. Two, the process of becoming degenerate. Three, sexual perversion would be degeneracy. So you can see what we're talking about here a little bit more or what some people might say. Number four, the coding of an amino acid by more than one codon. If there's ever going to be an odd definition, one that sort of sticks out from all the other ones, it's usually in the very last place, I have noticed. Okay, one more word for this episode. It is the word degenerate, D-E-G-E-N-E-R-A-T-E, -E -E, first form the second form will be in tomorrow. In tomorrow. This one is an adjective from the 15th century, 1A. 
having declined or become less specialized from an ancestral or former state. And the examples of, I guess, what you're being less specialized in are nature, character, structure, or function. Having declined, so you have declined or, or are less specialized in nature, character, structure, or function from an ancestral or former state. So if just from an earlier version, you are now less specialized in certain things. Okay? Degenerate. Your generation is less. <laughs> 1B. Having sunk to a condition below that which is normal to a type, especially having sunk to a lower and usually corrupt and vicious state. A condition below, just kind of rereading it, a condition below what is normal. So what, what society says is normal, uh, you have now sunk to a condition lower than that, and often very especially corrupt and vicious. This is what the people say. You can agree or disagree. Number 1C is the number 2 definition for the word degraded. 2. Being, okay, this is very different, being mathematically simpler than the typical case. And the example of how something is simpler would be by having a factor or constant equal to 0. So it's mathematically simpler as by having a factor or constant equal to zero than the typical case, as in a degenerate hyperbola. So the, this hyperbola, the degenerate one, is simpler mathematically than another one, than the normal case, the typical case. Three, characterized by atoms stripped of their electrons and by very great density, as in degenerate matter they've got less electrons and less density um, oh there's also consisting of de degenerate matter as in a degenerate star yeah it's a lot of the it's all about just uh being simpler being less than what the version the previous version is or the typical version that's what it is number four having two or more states or subdivisions, as in degenerate energy level. Five, having more than one codon representing an amino acid. Also, being such a codon. A synonym for all, and this I find odd, it's the word vicious. Degenerately is an adverb, and degenerateness is a noun. And I think the, well, you know, we, we got to see a lot of this thing, the, these things, you know, it's, uh, where was it? Corrupt or vicious? You know, this, that, that's, there's a lot of meaning behind that one. And that's how a lot of people see when they say something is degenerate. That's how they're, how they're using it. Uh, we will see more degenerateness stuff in tomorrow's episode. Um, but of course, if we go back to de degeneracy, the number three definition was sexual perversion. Again, that's how a lot of people use this. So not my most favorite word, but it does uh, come in handy when you're talking about math and amino acids and uh, energy and stars and matter and stuff like that. All right. We got to pick a word of the episode. I hope you ha are picking your own. Real quick, I'll say the words deft, defunct, defund, diffuse, defy, defy, deg, degage, degas, degaulism, degoss, degenderize, degeneracy, and degenerate. And this is actually pretty tough because there were a lot of good contenders. I mean... I'm going to support my degenerates, um, but I think degenderize is a really uh, good word for these days right now. Uh, let's see. De degage, that's a good one too. Uh, defund, that's really important for right now. Um, but I mean, I don't know. I think just for myself, 
for, for a couple of reasons. I have to pick Degage, D-E-G-A-G-E with the accents on the E's. I think I have to pick that one because it's free from constraint, nonchalant, free and easy. I, th- I think we all just need to just relax and be Degage. Let's all relax and be Degage. Yes, we should. All right. That's going to be the end of this episode. I hope you're doing very well. Uh, do I have other uh, movies that I want to talk about? Uh, there were some that I uh, watched on the plane that I forgot to mention. Um, oh, the Brian Wilson documentary I thought was really interesting. I don't know if I mentioned that, but I recommend that for sure. Um, I think, yeah, we haven't really watched any in a few days. We started watching, we were watching some TV shows. So, you know, later, maybe I'll give you some more movie recommendations. I will recommend, though, listening to the podcast Films to be Buried With. Just do it. Start at the beginning and do it. If you like movies, do it. Okay. Thank you very much for listening. And until next time, this is Spencer dispensing information. Goodbye.